the struggles this team has had just fielding a team with all the uh, COVID issues and players that they've had unavailable. It's getting better for them, and they may be peaking just at the right time. Hokies won the toss. They defer to the second half, so they'll kick off, and we'll get a chance to see Malik Willis in this Flames offense here early. An absolutely gorgeous day in Blacksburg. Only a 1,000 fans permitted in the stands as John Parker Romo puts toe to leather, and we're underway. Flames will take over after the touchback from their own 25. And as I just mentioned, Mark, we'll get our first look at Malik Willis, the young man who transferred in from Auburn. Yeah, Malik Willis actually verbally committed to Virginia Tech all the way in high school to play defensive back. But he wanted to be a quarterback, so he went to Auburn, didn't work out from an Auburn, came to Liberty, and he has been fantastic so far this year. You look at the numbers that he puts up, they are just, and those seven touchdowns, that just last game. This guy is fantastic, and he is leading this Kent Austin style offense that is very creative. It is run dynamic, but they can pass creatively on the outside as well. Willis to give to Mack, his tailback is a nice gain on first down. Joshua Mack, the senior from Pittsburgh, New York, gets a good chunk on first down. Yeah, and Mack is, is one of these one of these top running backs for this Liberty offense. And I mentioned Malik Willis leads the way. He has 495 yards on the ground so far, but Joshua Mack not far behind with 376. And it's just a combination of running backs. They got big, they got small, they got fast, they got tough. They really have everything in this Liberty backfield and expect to see a lot of guys rotating in at running back and a lot of guys rotating in at that wide receiver position as well because they have such a multiple offense that they can do many different things. Pickup of eight yards for Mack on first down. Willis again to Mack in a nice hole. First down for the Flames. And there you go. You're going to see it over and over and over again. Run the ball first down. Run the ball second down. It was short. Run the ball on third down. And that's really, you're going to see a lot of this on both sides of the ball and expect to see a shortened game. All the running, you're going to see limited possessions. So capitalizing on possessions during this first half, first quarter, is going to be so important to establish the lead in this game for either team. And Malik Willis after the first down, looking to the sideline for the call. Again, to give to Mack. Just testing the center of this Virginia Tech defense right now. Not a great deal of yardage after uh, Noel pa Pollard brings him down from the center of that line. Yeah, and your Virgi Virginia Tech has been you know, good defensively all year. Maybe not to their standard in certain games, but this is just a different style defense. You're used to the Bud Foster defense, which, which everybody's playing man-to-man. -man. You have keys, you fly downhill. A little different with Justin Hamilton calling the defense, but a good stop there on first down for this Hokies defense. Mack now split wide. Comes in motion, back into the backfield with Willis. The pitch out to Mack. Has to make one man miss, and does. Picks up about four yards. It'll bring up third down and short. Yeah, bring up third down short. Good job by Amari Barno, number 38, coming from that defensive end position and coming from inside out to make that stop. Really good move put on Shamari Connor, but that's a young man who used to play linebacker with a bunch of different injuries, including Emmanuel Belmar. He's playing defensive end and starting, playing very well at that. Peyton Pickett now in the game at tailback. Virginia Tech showing a little bit of pressure here on third and five. May have had movement. Don't see a flag just yet. Willis flushed out of the pocket. Throws on the run, and it's incomplete. There's that laundry on the field, and that might have been a free play. Yeah, good job by Liberty to draw Virginia Tech offsides. They jumped, and you know, good job by the center, Thomas Sargent. He's kind of the leader or captain of the team on, at that center position to snap the ball when he saw that to get the free play. And I mean, it's just... It's just a really good job. Sometimes centers don't snap the ball. You, you see the rest of the line just sitting there because it wasn't on the snap count. You saw the guy jump offside, snap the ball, free play. And, and Chris, I think something interesting, we, we've seen Liberty take their time between plays so far in this game. Usually they go fast, but they were concerned about depth issues versus a Virginia Tech team. And so that long time allows for more rest. Fake to pick it and Willis off target trying to find C.J. Yarbrough. 
Something of note too, Mark, with this Liberty team. Their big receivers, Yarborough and Frith. This is the first game they've actually played together. They've been on the field at the same time because of injuries this year. So as Virginia Tech gets healthy, getting players available from COVID, Liberty's getting healthy too and getting some of their big play guys out there. This could be a double pass, and it will be. Wasn't open though as DJ Stubbs looked to throw it back, it looked like to Willis Mark, but Willis was covered well in the play. Really good job studying film by Virginia Tech defensively. This is the same play they tried first FIU a few weeks back. They throw it out to Stubbs on the side, and that bunch said they want to throw it back to Malik Willis, actually, but it was sniffed out from Virginia Tech defensively. Watch how, you know, the numbers and, and the defensive ends just hustle to the football, not allowing enough time for Malik Willis to even go out on a route. Third down and long now for Liberty. Virginia Tech brings just four. Willis steps up to try and run for it. He'll be shy. Barno came in from his defensive end spot to make the stop, but they'll be shy of the first down. Well, Malik Willis is so good at just this. He drops back the pass and then scrambles. A lot of the running rushing yards that he has aren't necessarily on design QB runs. They're more so on scrambles just like that. And you, and you see the play call, too. They told Malik Willis, look, just get as much as you can get because it's four down territory for us right now. We understand we're facing a Virginia Tech team that's pretty good. Who knows how many opportunities we're going to have to convert. Gutsy call, though, close to midfield. First drive of the game. Let's see if Liberty does indeed snap the ball and go for it here on fourth down and three. They do. The handoff, and they'll pick up the first down and more. Mack now bounces it to the outside. Big chunk yardage for Joshua Mack. First down. Yeah, and watch this offensive line. The double team's working up. You see the left guard, Jacob Bodden, just push that offensive, that defensive line back, and Mack is able to bounce outside. And, and when you have running backs and an offensive line and just a rushing attack like this, you know, Chris, it's risky. However, you just feel like you can gain three yards every time you hand the ball off, and that's what Liberty was thinking and couldn't stop on Virginia Tech's side. Five carries, 29 yards on this drive alone for Joshua Mack. The fake to Mack. Willis has pressure on the outside. Going to go to the end zone. Has a receiver wide open. That'll be a score for C.J. Yarbrough. And C.J. Yarbrough just tiptoed the sidelines. I looked to see if there was a hat thrown saying that he was out of bounds at all, but does not look like it. Fantastic job of getting to the outside and watch the pocket. They keep five in to protect, plus a running back and a tight end. And a wide open C.J. Yarbrough down the sideline. The quarterback's going to like that, and I don't know if he's going to get six touchdowns through the air, but it's a good way to start off this game. Alex Barbier with the PAT in Liberty. 25th ranked Flames up 7 to nothing early in black. When it's half the cost for Fubo TV, get all the channels you want with all the entertainment you love for the price that cable can't beat. Try it open here. Well, in the middle of the field, you see 24, Devin Taylor, that post safety. His eyes go to the bottom of the screen. That leaves Breon Murray man-to-man -man at the top. A good double move by C.J. Yarbrough and just working his way in the back of the end zone. He, Malik Willis is able to see that it's man-to-man -man out there. Good call on the routes with the double move and wide open for the touchdown. That's something that Virginia Tech's going to have to fix or they're going to keep going back to it. Bouncing kick to Herbert, who returns it to the 24. So we saw Willis guiding this team to a touchdown on his first drive. Let's see what Hendon Hooker can do now in his opening drive for the Hokies. Yeah, you saw DJ Stubbs, the wide receiver, going down, making the tackle and kickoff. It's all hands on deck when you're playing ACC opponents for these Liberty Flames. But, you know, Hendon Hooker, just I think we talked a lot about Malik Willis and, his, and how good he is, but Hendon Hooker has been fantastic. 10 for 10 last week. I've never seen 100% completion for a guy who played the entire game. Oh, yeah, and by the way, three rushing touchdowns last week. And it was a real bounce back week for him and this Virginia Tech offense. That's the receiver, Trey Turner, on the carry. He won't pick up much, if anything, as the Flames string it out, led by Chris Megans in the quarterback, and make the stop. And let's see how, how they go. Virginia Tech goes this first offensive drive, a jet sweep to start it off. You got to think that's just trying to soften up the defensive front. And 
soften up you need because that defensive front for Liberty is gigantic. These guys are 6'5", 6'6", 325. Just some big bodies up front. Fake to Blackshear. Hooker's going to keep it right into the teeth of that defense. and picks up a couple. It'll bring up third down and long for the Hokies on their first drive. Yeah, good job up front by Liberty defensively. Elijah James, the senior out of Chicago, Illinois, got a big push up front. And him with Ralph Russin's couple of huge guys up front. And you know, this is going to bring up third down. And, and, and Virginia Tech just has not had third and longs very often because they are so good on first and second down. Hooker has time. Now the pocket breaks down. He'll try and get it on his own, and he can't. Nice job of breaking down and making the tackle by Anthony Butler. It'll force a punt from Virginia Tech on their first drive of the game. But let me tell you, this is not an easy thing to do for Anthony Butler. As Hendon Hooker moves, I mean, he is quick and agile, and Anthony Butler just takes away the space. You tell a linebacker, take the air away before you make the tackle. He didn't break down or anything, just shot through the legs. That's a huge third down stop for this Liberty Flames team. Oscar Bradburn with the punt, fair catch made at his own 25. Flames will take over again when we come back, up seven. Let's check a flag on the play before we go to break. That was a 49-yard kick by Oscar Bradburn. Both these teams have outstanding kickers and punters, especially Virginia, Virginia Tech, both up for postseason awards. So Bradburn with a 49-yard kick there. Let's check the flag. Stuart Mullins is our referee today. Get a chance to hear from him. Illegal substitution, 12 players on defense. Penalties declined. First down. Coach Fuente taking the big kick and pushing the Flames back to their own 25. That's where they'll take over when we come back. I think a pan is a pan until Made In came along, and I went, wow, these things are something better. The pots and pans that I'm using on an everyday basis are going to create wonderful products in my kitchen. Those are the pans that we use at Alinea. We're going to have the best pans in the world at one of the best restaurants in the world. ACC Network Foot. Defensive sideline for Virginia Tech. D-line coaches Bill Tierlink and Daryl Tapp told their group, don't cheat the system. Just trust what we do. Trust our game plan. Keep your eye on the ball because it's coming to you. So these coaches wanting their guys to settle in and keep things simple up front. You know, we saw Daryl Tapp there. You, he doesn't need to wear an orange shirt. We're going to know where he is on the sideline because he is loud and boisterous. You will know where he is at all times, barking orders out to this team. And that was a much better job on first down there, Mark. Yeah, no, they, they must have listened. And, you know, Daryl Tapp, that, that's why he's on this staff. He has a lot of knowledge in terms of defense. But, you know, a guy who played 11 years in the NFL, just he has so much experience and just so much knowledge of the game and so much respect from the players that, you know, he, he's kind of that, that motivational figure. If you need a kick in the rear end to get to get fired up, he can do it. Willis back to pass and has time out to the outside. Try to hit Yarbrough again. Incomplete. Dorian Strong, the true freshman, in the coverage. Coming up next, Pitt looks to snap their four-game losing streak. They're going to face Florida State right here on the ACC Network and on the ESPN app. They'll kick at 4 o'clock. Pitt's one of those hard luck teams when you think about it this year, Mark. They've been in so many games and just haven't been able to close them out. So let's see what they can do today against the Knolls. Third down and long for this Flames team after driving down the length of the field in their opening drive for the score. Willis now with pressure, moves the pocket to the outside. Ball is tipped up in the air and incomplete. Yeah, it looks Looked like, like Amari Barno was... got a hand on it. Exactly. I think you're right. And Amari Barno had a big tackle earlier earlier in the game. But this is kind of a, just an interesting concept. You go empty and, and re basically run a rollout pass out of empty. You don't, you don't see that very much, but you see 38. Amari Barno, he's 6'6", the tallest player on this Virginia Tech defense, getting his hand up in the passing window. And that's a good job. Defensive line stepped up huge, and I'm sure Daryl Tapp's happy. And Virginia Tech gets the chance to get the ball back. Tavian Robinson from his own 24. Makes one man miss, makes another man miss. Now tries to find his crease. Still on his feet, dragged down at the 43-yard line. So good starting field position for Virginia Tech. Hokies back on offense when we come back down seven at home. 
If medication is right for you, Roman delivers it with free two-day shipping and in discreet packaging. Get started with a free online visit today. These two teams separated by about a two-hour drive. Lynchburg is about two hours east of Blacksburg, northeast. Gorgeous day here in the hills of Western Virginia. Maybe two budding rivals here as Liberty now in their third season, second full season of FBS play. Hooker now to give the Blacks here. Tiptoeing his way for about three or four yards. For more on this Virginia Tech team, Katie George is on the sideline. Katie? Well, guys, I just got some unfortunate news for this Virginia Tech offense. Khalil Herbert, one of the most electric players in college football, is out for the rest of the game with a hamstring. Not only does he bring the yards and the touchdowns on the field, he's a huge leader for this offense, so his presence will be missed. Yeah, that is a big, big wow. news story right there. Herbert, who was... He returned the opening kick mark, and remember, it wasn't a big play. This could be, and it is, down the middle of the field. Turner with the grab, and it'll be a first down at the 38-yard line for the Hokies. Herbert returned that opening kick mark, and he went off, and he's out for the rest of the game. This is what they'll be missing now the rest of the way. Yeah, I mean, you look at the importance that he adds. You, those are FBS ranks, not ACC ranks. I mean, he is phenomenal and accounts for so many of the yards, total yards that Virginia Tech has. You know, real reason why they have four wins on this season. They are going to miss him desperately. <laughs> That's a risky play right there. Yeah, try a little trickeration. It definitely blows up. And Herbert, the focus of our Geico spotlight on the day, and for good reason, leading the country in all-purpose yards, and the Hokies will be without him. Now, Ian Blackshear have split time this year, so Blackshear is the transfer from Rutgers. He has gotten a lot of playing time, so he's going to get a lot more playing time today. Look like Liberty may have jumped. Could be a free play for the Hokies. Hooker tried to go up top to a double-covered receiver in Caleb Smith, but we'll get the call here momentarily. Offside. For 10. Defense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. I feel like, like once we're like this close, it's too Trey close Sean to tell like when we go over for the field goal. There's Blackshear. Very successful, you know, dual threat career mark at Rutgers. Great at catching the ball out of the backfield, although they haven't used him that much in that regard this year. No, yeah, he had 14 starts while he was at Rutgers. He had three 100-yard games in the ground. And, you know, he, he is a, he's a guy who is explosive. They used him in the slot a lot this year, but he was hurt and had dealt with some COVID-related things early. So this is really going to be the most action that he has seen this entire year now that Khalil Herbert is sidelined. and. Yeah, you know, we talked to Justin Fuente in terms of these two guys who have come in in the transfer portal, and they, you know, they both are, are electrifying. They were excited to have both Raheem Blackshear and Cleo Herbert in the game at the same time today, but now it's going to be all Raheem Blackshear. Yeah, I just mentioned they like to use him out of the backfield. He's so capable in that area. They tried to go with him on the screen, and Butler was just fantastic in terms of coverage from that linebacker spot for the Flames. So third and 14. Liberty brings just four. Hooker steps up. He may try and run it. He does. Good spin move. Still on his feet. Gets closer to that marker, but Butler eventually tracks him down. Shy. Now what do you do if you're Virginia Tech? They got a kicker with a big leg. Yeah, we'll they see are. what they, wants to do. Yeah, you, know, you see the, the just the running ability that Hooker has, but you know, this is an area. This would be a setup for a long field goal, but... You, know, you mentioned Brian Johnson. They said he probably has a range of 58 yards-ish, so this is going to be well within his range to put three points on the board. 41 yards for Johnson, and it is good. So Virginia Tech gets on the board. Johnson comes in and makes his 13th field goal of the year in 16 tries. Certainly a candidate for the Luke Rose Award at the end of the year, and he's good from, he could hit from 55 if need be yeah he could yeah, that's a good good drive though by by virginia tech obviously you're on the sidelines i'm not sure at what point they realized that uh khalil herbert wasn't going to be able to go but you get in the huddle you say okay look we, we can still do this and stick with our game plan hendon hooker had a fantastic pass over the middle to trey turner to get the big yardage and really you know, that's kind of what that first drive was i think that when we talked to scott simmons the the defensive coordinator for Liberty said, look, we know we're not going to be able to stop them all the time, but we got to at least hold them to field goals when they get down close to that red zone. A good job 
a Liberty defense on that one. It's going to be really interesting for us to see if Virginia Tech changes their game plan at all without Khalil Herbert in the game. Brian Johnson kicking off for Virginia Tech. Sails it down to the two. That's where Lewis picks it up for the Flames, and he brings it out just to about the 20-yard line. First time we've seen Shedro Lewis. He's kind of their, their black shirt, if you will, for Liberty, all-purpose guy. And a smaller back. You use him in a lot of different ways. Yeah, it's so three and out, last time out for Liberty. Yeah, you, you're See, talking about Shedra Lewis. Where's that number one? We, we, we got to watch some of that Virginia Tech film from last week where they played Louisville. And it's funny, you watch Shedra Lewis. He looks just like Tutu Atlo at, at, at well out there. Small, fast, speedy number one. Good back in his own right. Trying to get it out to Mario Douglas. That's a nice play on first down. Good pickup. You know, this offense, we talked to offensive coordinator Ken Austin during the week, Mark. He spent so much time up in Canada, and, and he talked about how up there you have to be great on first down because you have one fewer down to work with, and there's a lot of motion up there. And you can kind of see how he works some of that in with this Liberty offense. Yeah, it's really interesting. You know, in Canadian rules football, you have three downs to pick up a first down, and the field's also bigger, so you can be creative with your routes. He said, look, I took a lot of those same creative route combinations and just fit them to this size football field, and some of them I had to throw in the trash because they didn't work or didn't look good, but some of them really do work, and I'm excited to see this creativity as this game progresses. Give the Max swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. He'll be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Divine Diablo coming up from that free safety spot to bring him down. Divine Diablo has had a fantastic year. And with this defense that Justin Hamilton is running, it's a little bit different than Bud Foster. Bud Foster just loved playing man-to-man. -man. Everybody was man-to-man -man across the board, and now we got a little bit more zone that trickles in, and Divine Diablo said, look, I really like playing in this zone defense. I feel more free to make plays, and you saw right there, down by the line of scrimmage, he's able to come up and make a big stop to force third and one. Yeah, it wasn't able to pick up the first down, so again, third and one. Bigger back, that's Pickett, trying to get to the sticks, still churning his feet. Look at that strength. <laughs> Finally, the whistle is blown. He refused to go down, but I'm not sure he was able to keep those feet churning enough for him to pick up the first down. Yeah, it'll be dependent upon when they decide his forward progress was stopped. It looks like he might have picked up the first down and just watch. Look, he's going against Jared Hewitt, probably the hardest worker, strongest dude. He was a, a weightlifting champion in high school. And you, I have one thing written down on my sheet for Peyton Pickett. It's thick legs. This dude has got massive tree trunks below the belt. It's, uh, wow, good job picking up that first down and... Look at those, look at those bad boys. That's, uh, I wish I had legs like that. <laughs> Could have played more years. <laughs> he did pick up the first down. Now Willis dropping the snap. He just got to make something happen, and that's his specialty. Makes a lot happen on the broken play. Just a tough, fumbled snap. But he picks the ball up with confidence. His eyes are up, and sometimes you just say, look, just fall on the ball, but... Jamar Connor over pursued a little bit got outside of him and I mean you're able to pick up nine yards when you fumble the ball in the backfield and That's just the type of talent and athleticism that Malik Willis has you see his numbers there on the season He's just went over 500 yards rushing on the year It's pretty responsible good for, responsible <laughs> for 15 touchdowns already this season for Willis That's Pickett Nice tackle on the outside. They shard Ashby. You would expect that out of Ashby, but still a good run by Pickett. Yeah, if you want, if you want someone to tackle a big ball carrier, cue up number 23, Ray Shard Ashby. I mean, they call him Rook, but this guy, <laughs> Justin Fuente said, he's probably the best bad body football player he's ever seen. He's not necessarily the guy who's gonna scare you coming off the truck, but he uh, he is physical, he is dynamic, and just for the past four years, he has led the way for this Virginia Tech defense. Just a really, really good, solid player. Inside the final minute of this first quarter, 
Liberty has had a lot of success on first down. Coming into this play mark, 8.3 yards they averaged on first down. Not so much on that play, but to our point earlier and what Ken Austin wanted to do, you can't get behind the chains here with this going against this aggressive Virginia Tech defense. Yeah, no, you can't. And, and I like what they're doing, though, offensively. They're sprinkling in some outside plays. It, it, it seems to me like they're going east and west, meaning sideline to sideline on the first couple plays, then hitting up the middle. And you know, it just it softens the defense up a little bit, makes them run and gets the D-line tired. He's coming with five. Willis flushed on the run. He turns the corner and has room to run inside Virginia Tech territory. That's not easy to do. I mean, the old, the old Virginia Tech defense knows you're rolling out to the to your right. They've got guys in position, and I mean, he just bobbed and weaved around the edge and made it third manageable. That third manageable will have to wait. End of the first quarter, successful sojourn in the Blacksburg for Liberty, up four when we come back. Grandma always said, a salad a day will keep the tax man away. I'm not sure what that really means, but we all love a good salad. Out of Mark Hertz with Katie George in Blacksburg. Big story of the day was the fact that the superstar tailback for the Hokies, Khalil Herbert, Injured his hamstring on the opening kickoff. Hasn't seen any action since. We don't expect him back for the rest of the game, which means that Raheem Blackshear now is going to have much more on his plate. But this defense has enough on their plate as it is. Third and two for the Flames, and it looks like they'll pick it up behind Joshua Mack. Another first down. Big loss, though, Mark, without Herbert for Virginia Tech the rest of the way. Yeah, it is. And I think the interesting part for me is that he's still helmet on, shoes tied up. I mean, he looks like he's ready to go back in the game, but you know, we've been told that he's out for the rest of the game. And, you know, hopefully it means it's not too bad of an injury in terms of a hamstring pull or, or just a strain. So he'll be back next week. It means so much to that offense. Willis going up top, defended nicely. By Dorian Strong, this true freshman <laughs> cornerback, everybody talked about him during the week, Mark, and he showed up on that play. Uh, first of all, awesome collegiate football name, Dorian Strong. When Strong's on your back, you play like this. Really good job locating the football, but you know, when we talked to Divine Diablo today, he said, look, he is probably my favorite of the freshmen. He comes to work, he's hardworking. He also said that he uh, he can dish a little bit, too. He called uh, called. Divine Diablo old head because he didn't know the words to some uh, new hip song that he was <laughs> singing on the sideline. I mean, and, uh, it isn't like Diablo is our age. You would think he'd be able to, whatever song that Strong was singing, you would think Diablo would know the words to the song. He did not, so an old head. We get called that every day, but it's not so often that a senior in college like Divine Diablo would be called the old head, but that's his role all, now in this secondary. It's all relative, and it's actually, you know, it's funny, Divine Diablo is he kind of embraces it. He, you know, he said, you know, Reggie Floyd was the guy last year. I mean, he was the guy. And, you know, I had some leadership qualities in me, too, but I didn't really want to compete with Reggie Floyd in terms of, you know, his leadership and people looking up to him. Now Reggie Floyd's gone. This is my team. I'm a fifth-year senior, and he has been uh, voted captain and a huge leader of this team. Big third down here for this defense to get off the field. Flames looking to extend this drive. Willis to give trouble in the backfield. That's Shedro. And I don't think Lewis was able to get that first down. Rayshard Ashby was able to come up from that linebacker spot and put the spot stop on. Rayshard Ashby, so look at him inside, using his hands, getting off the block by the center. Or well, I think it was Brandon Shuttler. But great job of just finding the ball. Anytime you have linebackers walked up in the line of scrimmage, that outside zone play can hurt you. But now at fourth and three, we've seen Liberty already convert on one fourth down. Let's see if they hand the ball off again on this try. Ten on the play clock. Willis looking over to the sideline. Fourth down and three. Virginia Tech showing pressure. Now they come out. Willis flushed out. He's in a little bit of trouble here. Now downfield as a receiver. Did he get a foot in bounds? Let's check the official. Oh, he says wow. he did. Wow, what a throw and catch. That's Kevin Shaw on the reception. But Chamari Connor came off the edge, just missed the sack. But look at that ball. Does he get his feet in bounds? The referee is right there. That is perfectly placed. 
Look where Shaw is when he throws this ball. Unbelievable. And the fact that Breon Murray, or I think it's Amari Chapman, wasn't back there. You can't let a guy get behind you. On the field, it was a catch by Kevin Shaw, so the Flames now set up first and goal from the three. Willis with pick it in the backfield. Drops the snap, now picks it up. Just has a nose for that end zone, but can't get there this time around. Did get a yard out of it, though, Barno with the stop. Here's that 35-yard completion, Mark. Yeah, and this is a scramble drill. As you roll out, this right now, it turns into a scramble drill, and the wide receiver is told, look, find the front corner of the end zone. That's exactly where that ball was placed. Perfect placement by Malik Willis. Right dropped it in there to his wide receiver, Kevin Shaw. And, I mean, that is an NFL-level play, and we got an injury on the field. Let's check on that when we come back. I sent your new prescription to the pharmacy. Any idea how much it will come off the field? One of them is their starting tailback. Another one is a starting defensive end here in Barno, and they're already thin at that position. Yeah, and Barno, we saw him make a couple good plays early in this game on that first series, and he's probably their best pass rusher from the DN position, too, and Emmanuel Belmar is already out of this game, so they are very thin at that spot. And so right now, it looks like yeah, I don't know who they have in there right now. I think it's maybe Jalen Griffin or Eli Adams. Willis throwing. Touchdown. <laughs> Jerome Jackson, the tight end, his first touchdown of the year. What an efficient drive. 14 plays on this drive for the Flames. Oh, and really good job on the play fake. Pulled Devin Taylor, the safety, up on the run action fake and wide open for Jerome Jackson in the back of the end zone. I mean, the run threat that Liberty po poses has been playing in the minds of these safeties over and over and over again. And they've allowed guys to get behind them too many times so far in this first half. Barbier with the PAT. 14 plays, Mark. 80 yards. Seven minutes and 15 seconds off the clock. So now they have two long touchdown drives in this game. And you said it before, they're a team that we're used to seeing going quickly. They're slowing this thing down and limiting Virginia Tech's possessions, and it's working for them. The first drive that ended in seven points was a six-plus-minute drive. This one was a seven-minute drive. And this has got to be the game plan. I mean, anytime you face a team where, as you Freeze says, look, they're bigger, they're faster, they're stronger, they're deeper than we are, you got to use the clock to your advantage and having this consistency and being able to string together 14 play drives like you've seen so far in this game. I mean, really, Liberty to me, they, they are by far playing better than Virginia Tech. And it'll be really interesting if Virginia Tech can mount comebacks. They have before this season, but without Khalil Herbert, it's just a much tougher task. Yeah, this is part of the game where they're going to miss Herbert. And, you know, we mentioned how he led the nation in all-purpose yards coming in. It wasn't just running the football in that offense. He returned kicks. He returned punts. Injured on the opening kickoff. So now Raheem Blackshear, whose role is just going to be so much more in this game, back to return it. But this is out of bounds badly. And so it'll be good field position to start this drive for Virginia Tech. Let's take a look at our New York Life Drive recap. And this was a Start. big third down conversion first, Mark. Yeah, it was huge. A big push by the offensive line and set up, I mean, this scramble with just an absolutely perfectly placed ball and great concentration on the outside to get both feet inbounds. And then the touchdown pass to the big tight end in the back of the end zone. I mean, this, that drive incorporated run, pass, roll out, screens, pretty much every type of play you can imagine really well called by that offensive coordinator, Kent Austin. The fake to Holston. Hooker with the pump fake. Pocket collapses, stays on his feet. Nice job to find his backup. Out on the outside. And we got a flag on the play. Let's check that. It's going to be holding on the offensive line. Holding, number 76, offense. 10 yard penalty. First down. Brock Hoffman, the guilty party, center. <laughs> Brock Hoffman's probably one of their best offensive linemen, but. He just got pushed back on that last play right into the quarterback. Holding was all he could do to not give up a sack. 
impressed with this Liberty defensive front. They've been stout so far in this game. First down and 20 after the holding call. I mentioned Jalen Holston now in the backfield. The fake to him. Hooker looks to carry it. Can't quite slip that first tackle. As Trayshawn Clark tracked him down. You see him on a defensive end. He just read the bootleg and I mean that's really really good hustle play was sent turned back in on the outside by Anthony Butler good run down by Trayshawn Clark and, you know second and 15 Virginia Tech has been so good on first down they haven't had many second and longs this year but need to get back on track a fake to Holston Hooker over the middle complete to Turner and that's a big chunk of that yardage Cedric Stone was there to bring down Turner. That could be a first down. Looks like a first down for the Hokies. Yeah, it is. And this is a little beeline play. The Philadelphia Eagles made this play famous in eh, probably 2013, 14, where you just ride the ball in a little bit and just throw it right over the linebacker's head. Good execution. They've had two big completions on that same play in this first half. Good fake to Holston. Hooker has all kinds of room here inside the 40. Inside the 30, making men miss all the way down to the 21. And a late flag to 15. Great run by Hendon Hooker. And I think it's important to get him going with the run game early. You see the read option. It's, it's a true read option. Good job of pulling the ball. And After the play was you over. Know, Hooker. Personal foul. Late hit out of bounds. You hear the two. personal foul call. He's defense. not a guy. He's not After really quick feet, but you see him use the juke moves. <laughs> that out. works okay, but. That's, uh, I don't know about that call there. Mike. I don't That's, They called 32 on that call. Yeah, I don't. I don't know how you can avoid that. However, he began it was the tackle him. with him in bounds, and he didn't drive him to the turf. Either way, it's a half a distance. So Virginia Tech in good shape here. First and 10 from the 11-yard line of the Flames. Look like maybe a busted play. Can Hooker make something out of it? Picks up a couple. Yeah, miscommunication. Jalen Holson went the wrong way on the handoff. Yeah, he goes to Hooker's left, and Hooker hands the ball off to the right, and it's just little timing things like that. You know, it, it, just a little thing like being on the wrong side of the quarterback <laughs> it doesn't allow any running back or linebackers to to bite on the play fake. Second down and eight. Hokies can get a first down at the one yard line. Fake to Turner. Hooker just doing it all himself on this drive inside the five. See, pulling guard. Asita Smith just gets around and good job finding the lane, but that hole closed up much faster than I thought they were going to. Anthony Butler got in there and. Cedric Stone's down in the field. We'll check on him when we come back from break. I be the boss, boss. Give me the sauce, baby. I dunk and toss, baby. Give me the sauce, baby. And when I dip you, you don't even trip. Familiar with each other. They're going to battle for the trophy right here on the ACC Network and on the ESPN app tomorrow at noon when we begin our Sunday best. Hooker's been his best on this drive, responsible for every hokey yard, and he's going to try and add some more. And he won't get there. He may even lose a yard. Pursuit on third down by Kid Glass and the rest of the Flames bring him down. Yeah, watch Darrell Johnson just absolutely mush back the tight end. He was able to get in his way, and fantastic job bringing him down. And, and right now, Hendon Hooker staying on the field. Last week, they got in this situation a few times, and a lot of it was bring Trey Turner in a motion, fake the handoff, and let Hendon Hooker do it on the ground. See if they think something similar in this game, or if they just try to draw off sides. Get close can't to get goal. a first down on the one mark, so it is not in goal to go. Hooker's going to look to throw. Has a tight end and a score. Nick Gallo's first touchdown of the year. We got a tight end for the Flames getting his first touchdown of the year. And Gallo now on answers for the Hokies with his first score. Yeah, Nick Gallo, fantastic player you know, in his own right. He's only a true sophomore. Plays behind James Mitchell a lot of times. But anytime that you're down near the goal line, those tight ends are big threats. And 
Nick Gallo capitalizes on that long drive and so important for Virginia Tech to come away with a touchdown on that drive. Keep the momentum on their side. Johnson with the PAT. And it is now 14 to 10. Liberty on top. Virginia Tech with a nice answer mark, especially given the adversity they faced here early on in this game, losing Khalil Herbert right on the opening kick. So the offensive coaching staff for this Hokie team kind of having to rejigger their game plan a little bit. Yeah, you know, they, that's exactly what they have to do, and they're utilizing different pieces. You, Nick Gallo, not a guy who usually catches touchdown passes or he's even targeted from the three-yard line, because usually it's just, look, let's hand the ball to number 21, and he'll probably score. So it's uh, a little bit change of this game plan by Brad Cornelson, and it works. Very good drive by Virginia Tech. John Parker Romo to put the ball in play for the Hokies. Shedro Lewis back to receive the kick from his own goal line. He'll take it out. Reverse. He's got blockers in front of him. Can he get to the edge? No, he cannot. Demario Douglas forced out of bounds at the 17-yard line. So a good job on special teams by the Hokies. And a late flag coming out as well on the sideline. And Coach Fuente was right down there at the point of attack when that flag came out. Let's hear from Stuart Mullins on the call. Well after the play had ended. And Fuente is hot. Sweating. Oh, he's ooh. There's yeah, I don't think that mask is covering up what he's saying <laughs> when you're down that close. No, not at all. I mean, he has such good, I mean, good intensity. His players vibe off that, and he can be upset about a call all he wants. You know, it's kind of part of the game, but when you see your coach caring that much, and it motivates you. It definitely does. Gets you, gets you fired up to go play some football. And with the extended sideline during, the, you know, this season, he can get all the way down there <laughs> in the official's face. There is no foul on the bench area after the play. First down. Uh, the officials discuss things, and I guess they agree with Coach Fuente. Katie George has more on this Liberty offense now it's taken the field. Katie? Well, an interesting note is Malik Willis comes back out here on the field. He was once verbally committed to Virginia Tech. He attended a camp here back in high school. Justin Fuente saw a kid who could play three or four positions, quarterback, receiver, DB. He was just that gifted, but Willis said it was in his heart to play QB. So when Auburn offered him a spot in the quarterback room, he decided to stay close to home. And when things didn't go as planned there, well, he made a change, and I think we can all agree it's working out for him thus far. Working out tremendously for him and this Liberty team coming off a bowl year last year and unbeaten and ranked 25th in the country so far this year. They've got a lead on the road in Blacksburg. Pressure up the middle. Willis, nice job. Gets rid of it to Shedro. Back inside. Oh, and he gets Rocky stayed on his feet at least temporarily. Woo, Shamari Connor. He had bad intentions when he met Shedro. That didn't feel good. That <laughs> Jamari Connor probably the hardest hitter on the entire team. Fantastic job. Uh, you, this is kind of this is what William Wills did at Auburn. Got a little bit of a shot. You know, 12 games there, not a ton of attempts, but you know they saw that he had the ability to play quarterback and transferred over to Virginia Tech. I mean, transferred to Liberty, got his shot there, and right now we have another player down on the field. It's Rayshard Ashby. Check on his injury. Lots of injuries when we come back. Hey, Rayshard Ashby in a little bit. They were. Attending to his right knee on the sideline. So, so many players already kind of banged up here for both teams, but especially for Virginia Tech early in the going here as we're just midway. There's Ashby trying to walk it off. And I guess he still has his helmet and hand mark, so that's a good sign for him. Willis to give the shed throw all kinds of room on that right side. Bang down. For a really nice gain, seven yards, picking up the first down. Connor again on the stop. He's pissed off. Kachamari Connor's mad. <laughs> he missed a couple plays. He lost leverage earlier in this game, and 
He's been smacking people the last two plays. Tomorrow Connors, you know, he's a really good football player. And now with Rayshard Ashby not in, you got Dax Hollyfield, number four, backing him up. Armani Chapman was injured earlier on in the game. One of their cornerbacks had his arm being looked at. So <sighs> fresh set of downs for the Flames. And look at Shedro just bouncing it outside and stays on his feet to pick up an extra yard or two. Connor forces him at bounds. These two are going to have a little bit of a battle here throughout the rest of the day. Yeah, I think they are. And Shedro Lewis, I mean, he, he, he's, he's small. He's, he's just very fast. He's only 5'8", 175. Converted wide receiver. But coach just thought, saw that he had such natural vision every time he was on a punt return. So they put him back at running back, especially because Joshua Mack had to miss some time. And, He's been a really good addition to this offense and adds another dimension, especially being able to get outside the tackles. Second down and five for the Flames. Willis does a nice job not to hand that ball off, but Virginia Tech and Jared Hewitt had that thing covered from the jump. Uh, Jared Hewitt did a fantastic job of extending his arms. You see number five right in the middle. He's able to extend his arms and get that left outside arm free to bring down the quarterback and that's a tough play from the opposite nose tackle position really good really good job and he is he is by far the senior leader and captain for this defensive line front back again in the backfield on third down and six Douglas in motion Hokies now bring it to late blitz and they get to Willis ball down Fumble on the play, and it looked like the Hokies were able to pick it up. They were. Jalen Griffin, who now is getting playing time, Mark, because of Amari Barno's injury with the big fumble recovery. Uh, Jalen Griffin, I mean, what, what a way to start off your game as he comes in. He's just a great job of finding the ball, but you see the first contact, Norrell Pollard. I mean, he's a guy, he worked on his pass rush moves this offseason. He trained with... Tyler Davis, the outstanding defensive lineman from Clemson this offseason, and it plays just like that. Being able to beat a guy one-on-one -on -one provides such a spark for this Virginia Tech team just when they needed it the most. Great field position from the Liberty 30-yard line to start this drive. Hooker fakes the reverse. He's got a blocker in front of him, cuts it inside. Inside the 20, still on his feet down to the 17, first down. I like the play call from Brad Cornelson. You get a big turnover, you fake a reverse, but keep the ball in your most dynamic player's hands. Good gain on that first down, and if you can continue to execute like that on first down with the ball in Hendon Hooker's hands, there's not going to be a lot more handoffs going on the rest of this game. Here's one to Holston. Just drives that pile for an extra yard or two. Jalen Holston, the junior out of Stockbridge, Georgia, going to get a lot more playing time now with the injury to Herbert. Flag down on the play. Twenty-four defense, five-yard penalty, first down. Hokies will take the penalty yardage, five yards, first and five. We talked to Justin Fuente about Jalen Holston and. So look, Jalen Olsen's a really good running back, too, in his own right, and just hasn't had the opportunities because Raheem, Raheem Blackshear and Cleo Herbert are on the squad now, but yeah, Jalen Olsen's probably their best lead block running back for a QB run. Here it is right here, right on cue. Hooker, what a great sidestep. Can he get to the end zone? He does. What a great run by Hooker. Hokies take the lead. And that's what makes Hendon Hooker in this Virginia Tech offense so dynamic. A lot of people can hand the ball off. A lot of people can throw screens out to the side. But can you pull a guard and lead block with your running back and let your quarterback make some plays? Umpire did a little, you know, his best job of getting in the way as well, uh, which you love I always that. get annoyed with as being a linebacker. Um, <laughs> but in for six, great job by Hendon Hooker. And, Punch through the extra point, and Virginia Tech has the lead for the first time this game. 
You know what's interesting? You talk about turnovers and how they've affected Virginia Tech so positively in their wins and so negatively in their losses. That's nothing unusual for college football, but now they have 54 points off of turnovers on the year, and they've only given up seven points off of their own turnovers. They convert when they get the football back, as they did right there with a short field, just 30 yards to go. Yeah, it really is incredible, and their defense usually does stand up. The one thing that their turnovers does, though, when if, the, if Virginia Tech offensively turns the ball over, it limits the number of drives that they have. And when you're such a run-based offense, every drive is so important in getting at least some points off of a drive. So you know, a lot of those big turnover games lead to losses, but a lot of times it's not because the defense allows points. It's just the offense doesn't have as many opportunities to score. The homestanding Hokies take their first lead of the game at 436 here in the second quarter after the turnover by Malik Willis. Let's see what the Flames can do now. Let me get that momentum back heading into the half. Romo with the kick. This will sail out of the back of the end zone. Touchback for the Flames. Coming up after our game, Pitt looks to snap their four-game losing streak when they face Florida State right here on the ACC Network and on the ESPN app. Two teams in the middle of that ACC looking to establish themselves in the upper half, especially Pitt having lost four in a row. And We've done a couple of those games, Mark. Just tough luck for the Pitt Panthers. They've had injury issues and they've had their share of COVID issues. Mm -hmm. Just been close so often, just haven't been able to finish the thing off in the fourth quarter. Let's see what they can do today against the Knowles. Let's see what the Flames can do here after the turnover led the Virginia Tech points. It's got delayed Whistles game. Blow this one dead, yeah. Blame game. Offense. Five-yard penalty. First down. <sighs> that is tough for an offense coming off a kick, isn't it, Mark? Yeah, I mean, that, it's inexcusable when you come off of a break, right? You, you get a kickoff, you got to get everybody on the field, get everything together, communicate on the sidelines. See how Liberty responds. As you said, after a turnover on their last drive. Willis rolling to the right. Has a receiver wide open. Can't make the catch. Boy, it looked like he... Noah Frick may have lost that in the sun. How is he that wide open behind the defense? I have no idea how he gets that wide open, but part of the reason, I think, is that Virginia Tech is incorporating some zone coverage, and it looks like there's just miscommunication between Dorian Strong and Chamari Connor as to who is supposed to be deep, but either way, Noah Frith glitched a little bit when the sun got yeah. in his eyes. And well, that 12th defender, the sun, on that play. Yeah. Second down and 15, a missed opportunity for the Flames. Now Mack in motion. Pressure up the middle. Willis avoids it. Will he get a big gainer out of it? He will. Still on oh, his feet inside wow. the four, outside the 40, down to the 43. These two quarterbacks can run the football 24 yards from Malik Willis. And, I mean, just absolutely left three. That's Amari Barno. Good to see him back after <laughs> he was helped off the field earlier. But, I mean, he had a clear shot. And Malik Willis just out athleticized him that's not a word but it was now oh, and there's a flag on five. that play we're going to add 15 yards dorian strong the true freshman we talked about so glowingly earlier mistake here mark yeah i i guess i don't know i mean it depends upon when the whistle blow blew but the guy's not down. You got to bring him down. I mean, maybe it's just my defender coming out <laughs> inside me, but you know, unless the whistle was blown way in advance, it's you got to tackle a guy. But they called it, so 15 extra yards. On top of the seven yard completion, Flames now back in business. Mack rolls off the defender, picks up about three yards. Tisdale on the stop for Virginia Tech. Good to see Alan Tisdale has had, he's been battling injuries himself. Number 34 back in the action here for the Hokies. Yeah, you know, Alan
Alan Tisdale, he's, he's been playing in front of Dax Hollifield so far this year. He has, he has a little more speed. And, you know, last year they said, look, this guy is really one year away from being dynamic and outstanding. And, and he's on the field now because he has gained that confidence in that one year and maturity in this defense. Second down and seven. Pokies bring pressure. Willis hits his receiver on the outside. It's going to be shy of the yard marker to gain by about three yards, so it'll bring up third down and short. C.J. Daniel is a true freshman there on the receiving end. Yes, yeah, true freshman versus true freshman on the outside. Quickly, that's going to be a first down. D.J. Stubbs with the easy pitch and catch. Good recognition by Willis finding the open receiver. Fantastic recognition. They went fast, got to the line of scrimmage quickly, and Virginia Tech had to cover down the wide receivers. I mean, there are two wide receivers out there, but only one defender. They ran off Dorgan Strong, and it was just a wide open pass and catch for Malik Willis. Just really good, good to see Kent Austin sprinkle in some of that tempo, and we talk about, you know, how they're going to respond after Malik Willis turned the ball over. I mean, this has been a really impressive response on this offensive drive. Willis to give to Mac. Almost broke free. Almost was able to get past to Sean Crawford, but this Sean Crawford is a big old individual, so that ain't easy. Yeah, they love having Joshua Mack back. He missed a couple games earlier in the season, but he's a good addition to that backfield. Oh, great oh back shoulder goodness. throw and a completion to Daniels again. First and goal for the Flames. So this is probably the hardest route in the history of routes to cover defensively. I mean, you're, you have pretty good coverage. You're in leverage. It's just if you make a perfect back shoulder throw on the low hip of the wide receiver, you, you just can't get to it. Really good throw and catch. And C.J. Daniels does a good job of keeping both feet in bounds. Setting up first and goal. Inside of two minutes left to go in this first half. Mack in the backfield on first and goal. Willis keeps it. Will he be dragged down? He is. Fumble Ball the football. Down. Picked up by Virginia Tech. And they'll blow this one, Ted. Chamari Connor thought he had six, staring him right in the face until he heard the whistles. They're going to rule it an incomplete pass. Ooh, an incomplete pass. Let's see. Oh, that is, I think that wow. ball slipped out before his arm even started coming forward. And you see the white hat right there. It's, you know, they're reviewing this play. Now, Griffin has a whole handful of Willis's pants. And Willis is going down here. I thought the officials might blow this one dead anyways right here. Lack of forward progress. I thought he was just down. I thought it was going to be a sack. Ball comes out. And they're ruling that's an incomplete forward pass. That's six for Connor if they so let that one go. And he, so here's the thing. Okay, if they rule that this is an actual fumble and there is a, an immediate recovery, clear recovery by the opposing team, and that would be Virginia Tech ball. However, you don't get the touchdown. That could have possibly happened if Troy Connor had the free run to the end zone. Can't Usually, that Joshua Mack or somebody wouldn't have tracked him down, but either right. way, Mark, it certainly would have been an opportunity to put yeah. more points on the board. And usually, uh, we, what we've seen is you know, the officials are usually slow on the whistle with plays like that, so you can kind of see how the play turns out, and then you go back and review whether it was a forward pass or not. But take another look and see if any body part is down, which would result in, you know, obviously not a fumble, but does not look like anything is down. The ball is out of his hands. And it, gosh, it doesn't look like the arm is coming forward. Hugh Freeze having a word with the linesman. There's our referee, Stuart Mullins, talking to Tom Zamorski, our replay official. This is a big review right here for a number of reasons. And interestingly enough, you know, our, our stats guy is saying that it's officially ruled as a sack for now, meaning that they think a body part was down. I think we could see Mark replay that it didn't look like any of his, his, his butt, 
his elbows, certainly not his knees. I didn't see anything on the ground before that ball came out. No, and you know, interestingly, from the camera angles that we saw, I also didn't officially see the ball come out of his hands. Like I, I don't, I never saw that actual moment, but it never looked like. After further review, there's four pass. The, receiver, the runner, pardon me, lost possession of the ball prior to being down. The ball was recovered by Virginia Tech in the immediate continuing action at the nine yard line. It will be their ball at that spot. First and ten. The clock should be set to one minute 46 seconds. 146 and will start on the snap. So another costly turnover by this Flames team and specifically Malik Willis. Now there's two fumbles. Yeah, you know, he's trying to make something happen and He's right in the grasp of Jalen Griffin, the guy who recovered the last fumble. And, you know, we talked about it. Okay, yeah, great. It's Virginia Tech ball at the nine-yard line. However, you know, what Justin Fuente is going to be upset about is the fact that don't blow the whistle at that moment if you're not sure. Let the play play out. And could have been a much different field position with 146 left in this first half for Virginia Tech. They do keep... The Flames from putting more points on the board and maintain their three-point lead. Now Hooker. Oh, it takes a hard hit from the linebacker Butler. <laughs> He's talking to Butler. Too. He just came with that elbow, that shoulder, right into Hooker just before he was down. But a nice pickup on first down. Clock winding. Virginia Tech two timeouts. Mm. Tried to hit Robinson on that slant just a little behind him. And just like that, it's third down. I mean, you, you could, if you don't convert here on third and two, which is really Virginia Tech's bread and butter, but if you don't convert here, then you know, now it's good field position if you have to punt it away for Liberty to try to score before the half. Third and short. I think Hooker keeps it on this one. I'm just throwing it out there. Yes, I think so. <laughs> and he picks up a big game <laughs> out to the 30. It's like when you're playing rock, paper, scissors, shoot, Chris, and someone already throws the paper, and you, like, come out with scissors a second later. Yeah, well, they threw some scissors there, and it worked. Plenty of time to throw at an open receiver. That's Robinson. He'll get it out beyond the 45-yard line. So now with just over a minute left to play, clock temporarily stopping because of the first down. hopefully he's got a little something going here. They are, and they're finding the soft spot in the zones, and Hendon Hooker is... Hitting his wide receivers. Doing it through the Almost air. And very similar play. This time hits the tight end Gallo. Got a touchdown earlier in the day. This will be another first down. But Fuente wants to use one of those two timeouts. Talk things over now that he has it in Flames territory. Yeah, you know, it just did a really good job of understanding the defense that Liberty is playing. They're playing a you know, mix of cover three and cover two zone. And that soft spot right on the hash or right outside the hash is open. I mean, you see the accuracy that Henry Hooker has. You know, only threw the ball ten times last game and only six times throwing this game. But you see right there, just once that flat defender moves outside, that's when the ball needs to be thrown. It is thrown that way. And, and they're moving the ball down the field through the air, which is not the normal Virginia Tech team we see. However, you know, if this works, you could see more of it in the second half. Hooker, 5 of 7, 62 yards, 68 yards rather, passing. And 101 yards on 12 carries on the ground. He has been this Virginia Tech offense with Khalil Herbert sidelined. They're leaning on him, and he's pulling him through here. Now to throw. Has all kinds of time. Out to Blackshear. Makes a man miss, then gets out of bounds after a solid pickup on first down. Liberty changed up their defense. They went man to man, and good job by Hendon Hooker. Yo, understanding that it's man to man, I have speed advantage with Raheem Blackshear getting out to the flat, hit him with the pass, made a man miss, and you are about probably seven, eight yards away from being in field goal range. Yeah, Brian Johnson was hitting him from 52, 55. His career long is 55. Very little win today in Blacksburg, so we won't have that to deal with. Hooker over the middle. Gallo again. Short pickup on first down. Javon Scruggs was there to make the stop from the safety position. Gallo 
hustling now to get back into position. 30 seconds in the half. Nice pitch and catch. Turner on the reception. Virginia Tech has one timeout remaining, but they're clearly in field goal range now. Good top of the screen. Good job on the move by Trey Turner. Pick up the nice yards. And, you know, Chris, interestingly enough, you know, we called Nick Gallo's name a couple times in this drive. We haven't seen James Mitchell in the ball game at all in this second quarter. We'll have to keep an eye on that. He's their leading receiver, and there's a possibility he could be injured as well. We just haven't seen him. So, so far right now without Khalil Herbert, James Mitchell, I mean, that doesn't look like he's getting ready to go in anytime soon. James Mitchell out, their leading receiver, their leading rusher, their top linebacker, and Rayshard Ashby, and really, it's all on Hendon Hooker's shoulders right now. So the Hokies apparently still have one more timeout left. Under pressure, and Hooker just throws this one away. The danger, I thought maybe that might hang up there on the field of play, <laughs> but it does go out of bounds. So he saves possession, second down with 19 seconds remaining. Hooker got hit as he was trying to throw it away, so it floated on him a bit. Yeah, and threw it right over the head of a receiver, so not intentional grounding. He was still in the pocket, but you got to play it safe right now. You have three points as it stands. You don't want to turn the ball over. Showing man-to-man -man liberty as it defensively. Now they back off in zone. They bring just four. Hooker, receiver goes up to get it. And a fantastic job of coming down in bounds by Evans, Evan Fares. He's a transfer from Kansas. That's his first catch of the year, Mark. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good catch, too. Yeah, Evan Ferris he was 6'3", 208. He's a grad student transfer. And he needed all of that 6'3 to get up. That, that ball was thrown right over top of the flat defender. Good job coming down with it. And they'll review to see if he got both feet in bounds. First catch as a Hokie. Look at that trajectory right over top of the flat defender. It does look yeah. like he gets that right foot and left foot really in bounds. Before falling out, it's couldn't see that like he didn't. He, right, couldn't see that he didn't, and you know, does look like he maintained control of the football as well. But you know, that pass right there, you know, just it just reminds me of the season that Hendon Hooker has had so far. He missed the first couple of weeks due to COVID-related issues. Let's see again as it comes down, in, in, ball doesn't move, so that looks to me like a reception. But you know, he was out in the beginning of the year. Braxton Burmeister. The transfer from Oregon, he, he got really the, the first couple starts of the year and did a really good things with his legs. But then Hendon Hooker comes back and really kind of has to earn his starting spot After again. He does review, that. The ruling on the field stands. And he does that, and you know, he, it's because he can make throws like that, Chris. He is more of a threat through the passing game than Braxton Burmeister. Just a really good offensive drive in this two-minute drill for Hendon Hooker. 14 seconds in this first half. So after the review, it was a catch. It's a good look at Evan Fares, young man out of Full Shear, Texas, transferred in from Kansas. Before the end of this game, he might end up being the most heralded transfer from Kansas to make an impact on this game. Colston. Sprinted toward that pylon, was forced out of bounds at about the three-yard line. Now, what do you do here if you're Virginia Tech? I mentioned you still have that timeout on the board. You have eight seconds. Are you thinking two plays? I think you, I think you, you have time for two plays as long as play number one is quick. I, I like keeping the ball in my quarterback's hands, maybe fake a jet sweep or something, and, and you'll lead him up through the hole. Get down, get a timeout if it doesn't work. Hooker looking to the end zone. Has a receiver bobbled by Fares. Almost was able to come down with it. We do have a flag on the play as Marcus Haskins did a nice job in coverage. Kind of looks like a legal formation. 11, 
defense Ooh. after this is to the goal. Repeat first down. Well, that doesn't kill you that much, though, because you only have four seconds left. You really have one play here, right, Mark? I mean, you can't run a play and expect to be able to kick a field goal. No, you can't. No, there's one play left right now, and it, you know, it's, I think it's interesting. Really, regardless of whether that's an incomplete pass or not, it's going to result in the same thing, a, a field goal opportunity to get points on the board. But good job Brian by Johnson Scott Simmons. And, yeah, but this Liberty defense holding to a field goal. Sorry, Chris. Yeah, it's all right. 19 yards for Johnson. He puts it through to end the first half. Virginia Tech making the most out of two Liberty turnovers in this first half. And really, that's the difference in the game. As we have a little bit of a break before we go to the half. Both coaches want an explanation, as do we. We'll get one here shortly. Please put one second on the game clock. One, one second. second now, that's not something you see very often. Usually with four seconds left, the officials just let that last second tick off. They're putting that back on. Yeah, well... Very detail-oriented after blowing Detail. the whistle Sticklers to stop that run details. back on the fumble. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is interesting. Everybody's get back out there, and most likely you're just going to see the ball kick through the end zone. And if that's the case and no seconds are come off the clock, maybe one play. See right there, a little... Cheat sheet. Special teams coordinators are known for having little cheat sheets where guys get on there, maybe haven't been used to playing kickoff return. It just, it basically is a do, a do that, do that sheet. You look at it, you say, do that thing right there. You do it, <laughs> hopefully it works. <laughs> and hopefully nobody gets hurt on this kickoff as we saw in the opening kickoff. <laughs> Khalil Herbert lost for the game for Virginia Tech on the opening kickoff of the game. And Hooker is more than picked up for that slack as bouncing kick picked up by one of the up men here. And eventually, he wanted to make the most out of his minute in the spotlight with the ball in his hands, but couldn't make anything happen, and we've reached the half. Hokies with 10 points off of two very costly Liberty turnovers, taking the lead here at home. And go into the locker room with a six-point advantage. Herbert goes down, and he would not return in this game. Appear to be injured. We'll keep you updated on that one. Malik Willis, quarterback for Liberty, finds Jerome Jackson. And it's all Liberty early. 14 to 3. Later in the second, nine minutes left. Hendon Hooker showing out as well. This time finds Nick Gallo four yards and a touchdown. Hokies draw closer. Hokies on that comeback trail. Malik Willis would drop back. He's hit by Norrell Pollard. Hokies recover, they're in business. Two plays later, opportunistic is Virginia Tech. Hendon Hooker calls his own number here. A dynamic athlete making plays every which way. 12-yard touchdown. And this is where it gets interesting. Willis again, he'll be hit one more time. The ball comes loose after the Jalen Griffith hit. It's recovered by the Hokies. That's six going the other way. That's a fumble. But the officials would rule it down and because of that, the inability to take it for six the other way is eliminated. Hokies would get possession. Can they get points before the half? They'd settle for a field goal. EMAC doesn't like it. A whole lot to talk about here as we've entered the break. I'm your host, Jordan Cornette. We've got Coach Mark Rick, EJ McLean. Let's start with the, the, the call there, Coach. <laughs> Close, almost. Coach, this is where we're, we're going to go here with this. Did I mess something up? If I did, my bad. Coach Mark Rick. So, Coach. The, the play there that we, we saw, the officials whistled that one down. Right. That would have been six going the other way for right. the Hokies. Uh, what went wrong there? Why do you have issue? Well, the officials are taught if it's close, don't blow the whistle in, in case it is a fumble. So they blew the whistle. It stopped play. And the rule is if somebody immediately grabs the ball, they'll get possession, but they can't take it down the field. Now, would he have scored a touchdown? He had a pretty good lead. You know, it may have saved him from pulling a hamstring on the way to the end zone. I don't know. But at least he'd have got 20, 30, 40 <laughs> yards, and they probably would not have had to kick a stinking field goal at the end of the game. So not that I ever get mad at officials, but just some bad memories came up, and uh, 
some demons came out of me uh, against the <laughs> officials. They, they got to do a better job and let that thing play out. Now, Emac, I know you had an issue with the last play before the half. A field goal kicked by the Hokies, you would have liked to see them get greedy and try and get six there with four seconds remaining. Yeah, I just got to be, be confident in my offensive line to see how big they are, how strong those guys, and, and how effective Hendon has been running the ball. But that's why I'm not a successful head coach like Coach Mark Rick here. Uh, you know, he told us you got to get points no matter what. Uh, but I really would have liked to see them run some type of quarterback power, get in the end zone, and, and get uh, a more comfortable lead. You know, earlier in the game, they did go forward on fourth down, and they did score a touchdown right there in the red zone. But at that point, with four seconds, I'm getting the points, even though I should have got seven out of that thing. But again, I'm, I'm done venting. <laughs> <laughs> I, I like a good coaching vent every now and again. This one, close as we expected. We'll be intrigued to see how the second half plays out. Let's move ahead uh, or over to North Carolina Duke. The battle for Tobacco Road, the victory bell on the line in this one. Sam Howell in that offense. How would they perform coming out here after what they did last week in a losing effort? How finds Emory Simmons 51 yards. Tar Heels end zone. Touchdown. A few plays later. Cleaning it up. How runs the read option, keeps it himself. Paid dirt. Carolina, 14-0 at this point. 21-0. More Sam How, more of that Carolina offense. It's Michael Carter out of the backfield. He rumbles to the end zone. So we show you Carter there. Javante Williams. He's had himself a first half. Uh, 17 uh, touchdowns from scrimmage is the most in the FBS. And today, he has four touchdowns in the first half. Three of them on the ground, one of them receiving. Javante Williams getting it done for the Tar Heels early on as Carolina's rolling. A look here, Malik Willis doing in the air. Finding a receiver for a touchdown. Liberty trails by six. More halftime report on the other side. Congratulations. Welcome to the AFLAC. Half has been absolutely dominant, dominant. Virginia Tech has 208 total yards in the first half. 201 of those are from Hendon Hooker. 100 yards passing, 101 on the ground. And Virginia Tech is up six at halftime. Saxby's first half stats to Mark's point was really all about Hendon Hooker putting this team on his back because Khalil Herbert was injured in the opening kickoff. So Hooker had to do the damage, and he did. Virginia Tech better in the red zone, and they took care of the football. Those two turnovers costly as the Hokies were able to score 10 points off those turnovers, and they'll get the ball here to start the second half. Let's go down to Katie George. Katie? Well, Chris, that was Hugh Freeze's exact point. He was pleased with everything he saw in the first half except those two turnovers. He said if you eliminate the two mistakes, we'd be looking at a different score here. He thought they did a beautiful job controlling the clock and time of possession. He says as much as Malik Willis is my guy and I love everything that he does on the field, he has to have better awareness with the ball when he's in the red zone that resulted in a play that ended in three points for the Hokies going into half. Hey, Katie, it's interesting you talk about that, and Mark, when Liberty gets the ball back, I kind of want to expand on that a little bit with Willis, but we got to focus on Hendon Hooker here and the job he has done, and now really the focus goes to Liberty's defense and finding a way to stop him. Yeah, it is, and, and really, when if I'm Liberty defensively, and I'm Scott Simmons, the defensive coordinator, I'm looking at just the pieces that they have left. Will Herbert's not, not in the game. James Mitchell, their lead tight end, is not in the game, although we've told that he's been available to come back. So, really, you got to focus on number two and take take away what he does on the ground. And then the guy like Blackshear will make you pay, and Blackshear knifes his way into this second level. Trace John Clark tracks him down. A big third down here coming up. Yeah, big third down, and a lot of times on this third and short, just keep the ball in, in Hooker's hands gives it off and that's going to be enough for a first down. Blackshear is able to pick it up. You know, Chris, a lot of talk, a lot of talk goes into Khalil Herbert and just what he's been able to do, but I think always the unsung here is the offensive line and this offensive line is paving ways for whoever has been carrying the ball today and they are just really physical and tough up front. Hooker has that one batted down and complete. 
And you know, Blackshear is another one. You know, this whole last year, Mark, when we did Virginia Tech, we did them all the way through their bowl game, the Belk Bowl in Charlotte. We're constantly looking for that back that they could go to. This year, they get two transfers in Juice Herbert from Kansas and that man right there, Raheem Blackshear from Rutgers. And it's just completely turned this team around in terms of their ability to run the football. So we're not going to sleep on Blackshear here in the second half. He's a guy who certainly is capable of getting the job done. Yeah, he's, he certainly is. And you look for him to catch a little bit more, more passes out of the backfield as this game progresses. Like, no. Here you go. Again, you were right on the spot on second down and 10. Gets about three. So it'll bring a crucial third down here early in the second half. Katie, what do you got? Well, you guys were talking about this strong offensive line. Khalil Herbert may bring the juice when he's out there, but Christian Darisol brings the swag. Justin Fuente says he's a quiet guy by nature, but when he's on the field, he's a tough dude. He's not one to beat his chest or tell you how good he is. He lets the film take care of that, but every time he steps on the field, he knows he has a chance to influence the game. And he's not one to say much, but he's competing every single snap, and they feed off of that. Protecting Hooker's blind side on this pass attempt goes wanting to Caleb Smith so Flames do a great job of forcing a punt they'll get the football back to their offense here early in the second half yeah and you there look you at that us. offensive line and that's Darisaw big number 77 jogging off the field but you got a lot of guys who who have a lot of experience and Brock Hoffman their leader at that center position is you know transferred in from Coastal Carolina had to sit out last year but just you know maybe we have Darisaw bringing the swag well Brock Hoffman brings the nastiness to that offensive line. Douglas trying to keep his feet, cannot after another outstanding punt from Oscar Bradburn. 54 yards, pins the Flames all the way deep into their own end. And Willis will get an opportunity to start from the shadow of his own goalpost and make amends for those two turnovers that were so costly to this team in the first half. Yeah, you take a look at his numbers, 10 for 15. That's fantastic. 121 yards, that's great. Two touchdowns, great. But what it doesn't say is the two fumbles. And he's got to do a better job of protecting the football and just keeping it close to his body when he runs with it or when he does get pressure. Willis from his own five. The give is to Mack. Has room. He'll bring it out to the 15. That's a first down. Joshua Mack, here's a look at Diablo to stop. Yeah, it's a great way of getting the ball off your own goal line. Just a little zone seal play and good patience by Joshua Mack. And you know, we talked about Virginia Tech's offensive line, but you know, Liberty's offensive line, we talked to their, their coaches and said, you know, what, what makes them different? What makes them special? And he said, they never, ever stop. You see them com hustling completely till the whistle blows. Yeah, they are an effort based front. Fake to back. Willis threw a receiver on the outside. That's good. And CJ Yarborough was able to pick up a nice six, seven yards on first down. Waller was there for the stop. Good to see Jermaine Waller. He's been banged up for much of the year for Virginia Tech. Yeah, Jermaine Waller is probably their best cover corner. He's the guy that they, you know, if they need a man to man situation, they want him matched up man to man on whoever it was. Said he could have potentially played last week, but just didn't want to push it and see him out there making plays. Second down and five. Again, Joshua Mack in the backfield with Willis. Give to Mack inside 30. Stiff arm still on his feet. Out at the 38 yard line. Great stiff arm to keep Jamari Connor away and pick up a few extra yards. Look at Joshua Mack on this run. He's only 200 pounds. I say only, but he runs like he's such a bigger back. Yeah, he is. does a great job of setting up the block for his big tight end, number zero, Johnny Huntley. He kind of shifts to the right, gets Alan Tisdale on the proper side of the blocker, and then explodes on the back side. And I mean, 12 rushes for 70 yards. I mean, anytime you're averaging three, four yards a carry is great, but he's almost at six. He's got a real difference maker in this game. Oh, Looks like Chuck Muncy. Looks like a little yeah, Chuck Muncy. If you remember Those Chuck Muncy back. Yeah, no doubt. Dancing. Gets in that side. Look at him turning his feet and still Ooh. going. That's a lot like Chuck Muncy right there. Playing like he's Chuck Muncy. 
Well, I'm going to be. I'm going to pretend I'm Dorian Strong. Chris, you're an old head. I don't know who that Chuck Muncie dude is. <laughs> you, you're the oldest head. Look at that, those legs driving. I mean, you know, he's 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 more so like the in between. Shedro Lewis, number one, is the small back, and Peyton Pickett. We talked about his legs earlier. He's the big back, but Joshua Mack kind of has a little bit of everything, and really successful career at Maine before transferring here. And you know, this fifth-year senior has been productive so far today. Mack with 36 yards on this drive alone, and Willis isn't going to get anywhere on this. The option just stopped dead in its tracks by Justice Reed. Great job by Justice Reed, but you know, if I'm the coaches on Liberty, I just held my breath because I saw that ball extended, and, and that was close to being another fumble. Third and six now, and you know, Malik Willis, not a ton of the RPO pass game yet. Wouldn't be surprised to, to try to see him hit a receiver, maybe over the middle off of a play action. Willis going to try and do it on his own. Inside of Virginia Tech territory and picks up a first down. Does, Does he run like, I mean, he's a former Auburn Tiger. Does he run like Cam Newton a little bit, Mark? Just yeah, in terms a of the way bit. he glides, got long strides. Yeah, I think he runs a little bit lower than Cam runs. Ran, Cam runs you know, pretty much straight up and down, but a little bit lower pad level for Malik Willis, but he has that awareness. You saw him look to the sideline at the end of the play to make sure he got that first down. Effective as Cam is. Good decision making there. A lot of room for Pickett to run here. He's the big back in this trifecta for the Flames. Shamari Connor brings him down, but not after a good pickup on first down. Again, they continue to have success on first down. We talked to Ken Austin about how important that was. It has been all game, and they've had success. Yeah, they have had success, and you know, it really puts pressure on these linebackers. Virginia Tech plays really a 4-2-5 defense, so you're getting these two linebackers that don't have any backups as of right now with Rayshard Ashby out, and these guys are going to have to play the rest of the game. When you take get physical runs like that from Peyton Pickett, it's it makes for a long day. Our referee Stuart Mullins conversing things over with one of his officials. Full start. Number seven. Offense. Five yard penalty. Second down. I know it. Willis called for a false start. He doesn't seem to agree. Him. Must have got him trying to you know simulate a snap count. If you're too gregarious trying to draw a team off sides, you might get called, but it's very rare to see a false start on a quarterback who's not taking a snap from under center yeah I was gonna say you usually get like the head bob or something like that but if you're in shotgun you don't see it very often at all but we got it against the flames so a second down and just as we talked about how successful they've been on first down well now they're a little behind at second and 11. Willis steps up in a clean pocket hits his receiver he had a great lane to throw from and found Stubbs great throw by Malik Willis good route you set up right there you understand the leverage but watch how Malik Willis throws the ball to the outside shoulder of the wide receiver we'll get to that in a second that fantastic good run. run when you throw the ball when you have a stop route as a wide receiver you're taught turn to the side that the ball is thrown to good job by Malik Willis throwing that ball and you see them sprinkling a little bit of tempo you get a big play get up the line of scrimmage get a big run and they're moving the ball and really close to uh, the red zone where they've been very good over the past few weeks. And just when you think, Mark, they want to go quickly, they slow things down to a crawl. Had us all fooled on that one. Let's remember this play, this drive started from their own five. Stubbs gives a stiff arm to Diablo and a word or two. <laughs> yeah, good stiff arm by Stubbs, but watch how Willis delivers this ball. He steps up through that B-gap pocket and delivers the ball to the outside shoulder of the receiver, which is away from the defender. So it's just natural for DJ Stubbs to turn his body towards that outside to protect the football. And yeah, that's like quarterback 401. When they're freshmen or sophomores, you just say, look, just get the ball to him. But as you advance and prepare for the NFL, you got to place that ball perfectly on those stop routes. Liberty now back in the red zone on second down and six. Willis 
Cuts it back inside, inside the 10, inside the 5, he'll score! That'll make amends for those two fumbles. 95 yards on this drive, their first offensive possession of the second half here, Mark. Wow, a 95-yard drive against a Virginia Tech defense. That is not something you see very often. But watch how this play develops. I mean, everybody is in on the dive. I thought he handed the ball off to, to pick it on initially, and I said, ooh, that's going to be a TFL. Next thing I know, Malik Willis is running to the end zone for six points. Just a really, really good drive, mixing in run, pass, quarterback keep for that Flames offense. Barbier with the point after try. It's good, and Liberty just ref an offense that contributed to that long drive. It was an impressive fashion. And now let's see what the Hokies can do to answer. Barbier into the end zone. It'll be a touchback for Virginia Tech. We'll take a break and we'll come back. We'll get Hendon Hooker and the Hokies with the football. Absolutely. Thank you, Aaron, Danielle, and all the veterans out there. We look forward to celebrating you on Veterans Day on Wednesday. Hooker now looking to respond to Willis's touchdown run. Keeps it here into the meat of that defense for this Liberty Flames team. And Hooker had so much success in that first half. Mark, you mentioned him right when we came back to start the second half. 208 yards for Virginia Tech in that first half. 201 he was responsible for. So with Herbert's injury, he's putting this team on his back and he's going to have to do it here in the second half. Now pressure coming. Rose, where the pressure came from, you taught me so well on that, and Robinson has room to run. The pressure yeah, came you. from the left, and that's where he went with it. Yeah, lucky the play was drawn up that way as well. A little wide receiver screen, and you get one of your bigger wide receivers, Changa Hodge, out in front with a good lead block, number 85, and they've been relying on Tavion Robinson a lot this game. They wanted him to pick it up a little bit heading into this matchup, and he has so far the lead receiver, Brandon Hooker, so far in this game. And been able to capitalize on some of those screen plays and caught a nice pass early in the game downfield as well. Now the fake to him, the handoff to Brashear. Give him about three. Blackshear picks up three. Transfer from Rutgers. That looked like almost like a wing T kind of a play. Yeah, it did. You're trying to get the linebackers and safeties eyes moving. It's so funny how... Out of all the body parts <laughs> on a defender that an offensive coordinator wants to mess with, the eyes are the number one thing. If you can get a guy looking at the wrong thing, it's very difficult for him to make a play. And you saw that last one. That's what it was trying to affect. Robinson made the first man miss. Now runs into the back of his own lineman, Luke Tenuta, but is still able to pick up a big, big gain on second down. Got a flag, though. Let's check it. Holding number 85, offense. 10-yard penalty. Second down. And that's going to be a hold against Virginia Tech, so that's costly. Yeah, it's Changa Hodge. You mentioned him earlier, made a good block on the previous play, but here's another transfer from Villanova who came to this Virginia Tech team and thought maybe he'd have a bigger role earlier in the season, but just missed a lot of time for whatever reason. You know, they don't specify these days, but missed a lot of time earlier in the season and looking for a bigger role today. Holding's not going to help that much. Fakes Robinson. Hooker has time. It's Blackshear out of the backfield. And that'll get him right down close to the stick. He's going to be a little bit shy, maybe a yard shy of picking up the first down. So third and one. Yeah, interesting follow route. You see the tight end and the running back basically run the same route. Probably a miscommunication. You see 89, Drake Delius, not, not normally a starter, but it ended up working out in Virginia Tech's favor. This works out in their favor as well. Hooker on third and one. That's a first down. And just watch his offensive line. You, you see big number 61, Brian Hudson, leading the way on this quarterback draw. And you're really effective. Whenever you pull a guard and can run a quarterback draw, it just it messes up the gaps for a defender. Blackshear gets about three on first down. Now they're involving him heavily in the passing game. Yeah, and this is what it seems like they want to do. They want to, if they want to run the ball, let's keep it in, in Hooker's hands or do a jet sweep to, to one of our wide receivers. And then, you know, if we want to get a short dump down pass or a quick pass, let's get Raheem Blackshear out of the backfield 
as a receiving threat in space and that's really been the game plan in the last two drives by Virginia Tech. You saw Darisaw coming out. Jancy taking his spot at that left tackle. Herndon just not a whole lot of room to run that time. Aaron Pierre with the stop. Yeah, Aaron Pierre, he stepped up for this team and coach said, look, you need to get Aaron Pierre to go downhill a little better. Well, <laughs> that play looks downhill to me. Able to come and do a perfect form tackle on Hendon Hooker. Bring up third and six. Darisaw looks to be back in the game at left tackle. Hooker just looks to put his head down and won't pick up much. Big old number 50 there, Henry Chibuzzi, was there to bring him down. Yeah, it seems like maybe four down territory for Virginia Tech again. And that's why in third and six, you you know, just try to pick up a couple, but I don't think they picked up enough to try to go for it. If it was fourth and two, I'd say they keep the offense on the field, but now they bring in the kicker. Try to go up by two points. You mentioned Brian Johnson with a big leg. He's going to need one here. This is from about 51. He's going to pull this a little to the left, and it's no good. So much to the delight of Hugh Freeze, the Flames hold. They still lead in Blacksburg. I think Katie George is a regular on Packer in Durham. I've yet to get myself a regular spot. I'm going to continue to work on that. We're only a year and a half in. <laughs> help me out with that. I mean, Wes, come on. Help me out with that one. Flames starting another drive, and they've had some impressive drives this year, Mark. Think about, I mean, this season. Think about what they've done in this game, rather. Only one punt, three long time-consuming drives, and two turnovers. Look at these drives that they've had in terms of scoring drives with their three touchdowns. Yeah, and obviously the two turnovers on the other drives, but time of possession-wise, they are absolutely dominating this game. They've had the ball for almost nine more minutes than Virginia Tech, and it's going to wear this thin Virginia Tech defense out eventually. That's Shedro Lewis looking to bounce it outside with the quickness. Stays in bounds to try and get an extra yard or two before being forced out by Devin Taylor, but a good pickup on second down will bring up third and certainly manageable for this Flames offense. Yeah, this is a perfect perfect situation that they want to be in on third down. Obviously, you know, third down and two really allows for a true run pass option read where you know you can hand the ball off. You have your smaller back and Shedra Lewis still in the game, but two big tight ends flank, flanking this formation. Third down and two. Late clock now at five. Willis with the snap. Gives it to Shedro, sidesteps the first tackle and gets a first down. Divine Diablo had a free shot on Shedro Lewis in the backfield. And watch number 17 coming right there, and Shedro Lewis just hits him with the right trigger and jukes right past him, picks up a first down. Very difficult to, to, to catch these little fast guys in the backfield. I was once I once I got my hands on him, I could bring him down, but he really had a hard time catching him, and Diablo is left in the dust on that last play. But again, you're, you're watching Liberty, that normally is a fast-paced offense, take their time and really running out the entire play clock before the snap. Willis tries to get by Diablo and does first down, and then tried to sneak in a couple of more yards and saw a big old 96 right there. Noah Pollard and said, "I'll step out." Well. I really don't want to pick on Divine Diablo because he's one of my favorite players in the ACC. I love the way he plays. However, this is a really, really good, good move by Malik Willis. I mean, he, he just uh, he just put Divine Diablo's ankles in his pocket and took him home with him. Two plays in a row where Divine Diablo is tackling air. Katie, what do you got for us? 
think it's an interesting point that you both bring up. A lot of these Liberty players, they say they respect Malik Willis because of his ability to put his head down and want to go for more yards. Most quarterbacks that you see when they tuck it and run, they'll just get the first down and they'll run out of bounds. But he actually works to get more yards. He's fighting for the team. And so he's garnered a lot of respect just within this locker room and on the sidelines for the way that he carries himself and fights on the field. Well, he's carried the Liberty Flames to a lead here as we head to the fourth quarter in Blacksburg. 25th ranked Liberty Flames on top. Quarter number four when we come back. And it's a one-point game as we head into the fourth with the Flames and a first down inside Virginia Tech territory. Willis just gets back to the line of scrimmage. Tisdale was there on the stop. And good job initially by Jalen Griffin, number 41, getting upfield and making Malik Willis stop his feet and change direction. Well, Griffin's a guy that, you know, coming today, he was a backup. Not a ton of production so far in the year, but just really good game since he's got his number called. and Stepping up big time. Willis, the fake. Steps up into the pocket, has a receiver. That's a heck of a catch. That is a nice catch by Demario Douglas. Fantastic catch by Douglas, but a really good job coming back to the football. Watch as he comes from inside out. He's, he's really coming on a go ball, but sees that Jamar Connor is playing him deep and then comes back to the football. That is working back to the football for your quarterback. Really good job creating a third and five rather than an incomplete pass third and ten. Looks like Hollyfield might have wanted to come with a little bit of pressure right now. Virginia Tech showing just four. They give up the middle. Close to the first down. I don't think they're going to get it. Hollyfield was there on the stop and Mack may have come about two feet shy, Mark. Now what do you do here? You got the one point lead. You try and pin him deep or do you go for it? Close to midfield. You, you bring number 25 in the ball game. Mr. 5-8-2-20 Peyton Pickett. And you hand him the ball. Yeah, I mean, it, it, when you have a running back that is of that stature, a senior with legs like tree trunks, you let him get one yard. Or you let him lead block and let Malik get one yard. Flames two for two on fourth down today. Willis is going to keep it. He has the first down and a couple of yards more down to the 32 yard line. Yep, keep the ball in your best player's hands. Number 25, lead blocks to the left, and they're just not fast enough to get over top. Dax Hollyfield makes the stop, but really good drive. I mean, this entire drive, really every scoring drive that Liberty has had has been just getting chunks of yards. Not a ton of big plays given up by this Virginia Tech defense, but it's just little chunks at a time, and Lots and lots of third down conversions and fourth down conversions for Liberty so far in this game. And lots of time off that clock. They are just bleeding that clock dry. Mack doesn't even get back to the line of scrimmage. He'll lose almost two yards. Jared Hill was shaken up a little bit earlier in the game. He's back in. And both these teams have been really good on first down. Liberty is averaging five and a half yards on first down, and Virginia Tech's averaging seven yards on first down. So there haven't been a lot of really long third down tries. Let's see if they can get back on track as Virginia Tech shows pressure up the middle. Mac is in the backfield with Willis, fakes to Mac. Willis up in the pocket now goes up for the all the marbles and just could not quite hook up with Douglas. And I just don't know how he keeps getting behind this defense. I mean, there have been multiple times where these wide receivers have been behind Virginia Tech's defense. And that's something that Virginia Tech has to clean up before the day's out, but especially going into future games, we're going to see a lot more deep balls against them. Third and 12 Pitt. now. Pitt and Florida State coming up after us. 
Willis has time. Now he's flushed. Signals his receiver to get open. Inside the right about the 21 yard line. That's going to be a first down. Well, that throw was ridiculous. I mean, it makes it look easy. However, you are rolling out to your right. You sense a little bit of pressure. You move out to the right. You're looking all the way across the field and are jumping off of your right foot and throwing as you're falling to your right. I mean, that's like a LeBron James fadeaway three-pointer. I mean, that was really good. And It's going to be off or not. Illegal motion against Liberty is going to move him back five yards. So they'll have to convert this third down and even longer again. Hokies again bring four. Now Willis flush to his left. Watch out for the fumble balls on the ground. Oh. Barno again causing the fumble. This time a flame was able to fall on it. Mark, you could see that one happening. You could see it before it even happened it was going to happen. <laughs> I got you on my Zoom feed to my left, Chris, and I'm watching your face <laughs> as he's running. You're like, oh, good, he's going to get you, he's going to get you, and really good job. I mean, Amari Barno, a redshirt junior, just understanding where the ball is, swiping it out, and we have another player down. We'll check on the injury when we come back from break. This is the new iPhone 12. 21 20. Malik Willis and his Liberty Flames fortunate enough to fall on that last loose ball, but they'll bring up a fourth in long at the 45 yard line. And in this particular case, Hugh Freeze not going to go for it. Going to try and pin Virginia Tech deep. Robinson fumbles the football on the muff. And it's recovered by the Flames. That's a huge play. Oh my goodness. Wow. Davion Robinson just took his eyes off the ball at the very end of the play. He mishandled the ball. It just hung up there, and at the last second, the wind might have caught it, but really good job by Liberty to get on it. You're in a muff, you can, can't advance it, so you just need to fall on the ball, but Liberty got the ball back in unbelievable field position, and that's, that's the first turnover of the day for Virginia Tech. Huge play by Benjamin Alexander on special teams to pick up that muff punt. There you see Coach Fuente having a word with Robinson. So complimentary of Robinson's return skills earlier on in the week. And just a mistake. You mentioned it, Mark. The first turnover of the day. Both turnovers from the Flames extremely costly in the first half. And now it's an opportunity for Liberty for a little payback here from the Virginia Tech Five. Willis on the fake. Looking to throw into the end zone. A receiver wide open. And they convert. Johnny Huntley with the second touchdown of the year. Liberty extends their lead. That was a wide open tight end target. It looked like Virginia Tech brought really their big boy goal line personnel in. You see all those defensive linemen up. And that puts Amari Barno, the D end, on the tight end release. This is a very difficult thing to play goal line defense when you're not technically down on the one or two yard line because there's just a lot of space for people to work. Good job exploiting it by this Liberty offense. And just like that, Liberty is up by eight points. On a punt return that led to a five yard passing strike from Willis to Huntley in the lead extended for Liberty now eight points and they have really controlled time of possession and this when you're trying to play from behind Mark that has to be a concern for Virginia Tech just in the sheer number of possessions you're going to have left in the remaining ten and a half minutes here. Yeah if, if you know that shows anything about what's going on I mean you got to assume that the next time you give Liberty the ball back they're going to at least run five minutes off the clock and you just don't have a ton of time left. This is a huge huge possession for Virginia Tech offensively to at least pin Liberty back. But the idea right now is to get a touchdown and Hendon Hooker, he's more than capable of doing it by himself. He's shown it already today. Certainly has put this team on his back with Khalil Herbert injured on the opening kickoff. So it has been much more about Hendon Hooker doing it with both his arm and his legs. And he's had success, but not so much here in this second half. Hooker going to throw it. 
Back shoulder throw complete. Big pickup on first down. Hits Turner. Ooh. A mess back here by the line of scrimmage. That is Brock Hoffman. The center looked like he was mixing it up with Aaron Pierre a bit. Four offense. Five yard penalty. First down. Looked like we had a flag that was an illegal, might have been an illegal receiver down, ineligible, ineligible receiver downfield. Hey, the ACC Field Hockey Championship is tomorrow at noon Eastern. North Carolina and Louisville right here on the ACC Network and on the ESPN app. We call it Sunday's Best for a reason. Check it out noon tomorrow on the ACC Network. So a nice pitch and catch nullified first and 15. We've seen that so many times today. Robinson on the receiving end, Mark, haven't we? That, that same exact route being run with so much success. Yeah, and great job by Virginia Tech just to switch up a tad. They brought the flat route with Raheem Blackshear from the backfield. It, it pulled Jawan Treadwell up off of his zone coverage and really opened up wide open spot for Robinson to make that catch. And good to see them go back to Robinson early after that costly fumble on the punt return. Second down and three. Hooker, lots of room near midfield before being brought down. They'll move the chains. Spread out the wide receivers, get five guys in the box, and then you're able to option defensive ends, and that one, Treshawn Clark, just couldn't be right. You either go for the dive, and Hinton Hooker runs around you, or you stay on Hooker, and the dive breaks free. So, you know, good job utilizing what they have offensively. You expect them to do a lot more with Hooker on the ground on this drive. Blackshear. He bounces it outside. Good for 10, 15 yards. Banged down by Dabney, but not after a big pickup and another first down. So now the hope is picking up yards in chunks. 14 on that carry. Yeah, and a little bit late by the linebacker Anthony Butler coming downhill. Lasita Smith was able to get up on him. A good block and sprung Raheem Blackshear for a, a long gain. A big hit from Dabney. Looks like Blackshear was signaling to come off the field. And looks like Dabney is going to as well. There you see Herbert right next to Blackshear. The two transfers, Herbert from Kansas, Blackshear from Rutgers. Here's what Blackshear's been able to do today. If you're just joining us, Herbert knocked out in the opening kickoff. Glad to see he's there with the team in uniform, but helmet not in hand. And the hamstring injury on that opening kickoff. Haven't seen him since. Yeah, this type of thing, you just don't want it to get worse. I think that's... Yeah, that's what the coaches are saying. Like, look, man, we got two other guys that can do it. Uh, and better than having a hurt Cleo Herbert, maybe having these two other guys fill in and number two run the ball himself. And he's doing it right here. Butler's done a really nice job of tackling today. Was able to just grab an ankle of Hooker and bring him down. And those two share a nice laugh. Yeah, very, very good job by Anthony Butler. We talked about him earlier, taking the grass away, taking the space away between you and the runner. And watch this time, he just he shoots the legs and wraps up. Too many times defenders these days shoot and don't wrap. Good job by Butler on that last play. Hooker just throws this one away. That play blew up and he had pressure right from the start. Terrell Johnson was right in his face, so Hooker just said I'm going to throw it away and live to play another down, which is now third and six, crucial. Yeah, it's crucial. and You see Terrell Johnson right there. He's him and Treshawn Clark are two of their best pass rushers and and usually on third down they bring in really a pass rushing group they bring in Steven Sings and Akil Washington but with the ability for Hooker to run the ball they've left their big boys in up front on third down so far today it's a run formation Hooker the draw he'll pick up the first down and a lot more Inside the 20 with a stiff arm down to the 16. Good job on the play design. It's really a QB lead draw. You watch how the Cedar Smith number 54 pulls around and Blackshear leads the way. But just that little hesitation with his eyes upfield lets the defense lighten up a little bit in terms of their run pressure. And this is another run formation. You see how. The wide receiver bottom of the screen is covered up. Can't go off for a reception. 
Last year picks up maybe a yard. Johnson again there on the stop. I know you got to love that, Mark. Dirt and mud and <laughs> grass stuck in his helmet. Quarterback. Oh, my gosh. I, mud on the back do, of his jersey, yeah. You love it. The only thing, you, you do hold your breath every time he gets hit <laughs> just because you know how important he is to this team. Pass set now. 52 yards on the ground. Screen. This one has a chance to be something, but a nice defensive play that time as Jabuzi came by to make the stop on Robinson. In this game, and really prevalent on this drive so far, they've, the Virginia Tech has lined up either in an unbalanced formation, they've, they've run the ball, or it's been a balanced set like this one, and it's been passed. Let's see if they break a tendency on this play. Blackshear switches places to Hooker's left. Flames bring just four. Now Hooker will look to run. Inside the 10, chased out of bounds at the 9 by Haskins. Oh, oh it's plays like that where you get your quarterback's oh, legs wrapped up and spun around. I mean, good play by Hooker, but you just... Every one of these, these tackles, you're just like, oh, boy. Right here at the end, you see just... Uh, you never know what gets caught under your body, but... Able to escape it, injury free, and now brings up a big fourth and three. So what do you do? You go for it here, down eight, rather than kick the field goal to make it a five-point game, and now we might have some discussion about it. Yeah, I think two time out. Time out. Liberty, their first of the half. Liberty's going to call it his big win last night against NC State, and this one, fourth and three, Virginia Tech going for it. Down eight, Blackshear in motion. Hooker looking over the middle. Caught for the score. Caleb wow. Smith hung on. What a tough catch and a big play for the Hokies. What a gutsy play call from Brad Cornelson, the offensive coordinator. The run has been working so well, but you allow your quarterback to do something that he might not be known for, but does well. Throws that little back shoulder throw. To Caleb Smith and great job coming out, coming down with it. And you down two points. You gotta go for two in this situation. Hooker, will he run? He has the option. Now he throws. And Blackshear will convert. They just put the defender in a bind as you roll out to the right side. And Hendon Hooker just looks downfield like he's going to run the ball, puts the defender in a bind, and dumps it off to his running back for the big score. Grandma always said a salad a day will keep the tax man away. I'm not sure. Caleb Smith with his first touchdown grab of the year. The two-point conversion all knotted up at 28 apiece. 5.46 left to go in the fourth quarter in this one from Blacksburg. Thought we might have a really good game, and it has delivered on just about every single aspect. Look at what Hooker has done. 156 yards on the ground in the absence of Khalil Herbert, who was hurt early in the game. 162 through the air. Put this team on his back. Now, it seems like it's a it's a prize fight, Mark. Two heavyweights <laughs> here. What will Malik Willis do now to answer? It's been blow after blow after blow. And just when you think someone's down to get back up and they fight back. And so, you know, I, I'm excited for this drive from Malik Willis. And I think he's going to show a lot of people across the country what he's made of. As you're going to tie a ball game with five minutes left against an ACC opponent. Got a blocker in front. Lowers his oh, shoulder and oh, runs oh, a man oh. over. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, that was a good run. And, uh, you know, Malik Willis, we talked earlier about, you know, comparing him to Cam Newton. He runs a little bit lower. You watch there. I mean, just able to dip his shoulder pads all the way down or small surface area to tackle. Just ran over Jermaine Waller. Now Willis has gone over 100 yards rushing on the game. He has 104 to Hooker's 156. And right now, you know, it, they're running the clock out. You, 
is this fine balance between not leaving any clock left for Virginia Tech, but also having enough time to get down in scoring range. Give to Mac. Looking for an alley. Finds maybe three yards along the left side. See, there's the look. There's the Chuck Muncie look. I love those glasses. A lot, of, a lot of guys have visors, but not a lot of guys have the throwback rec specs. Right, the thick black frame glasses. Part of it, too, is not a, I couldn't pull that off. I couldn't pull it off. Just, you know, the way I played, just couldn't pull it off. But Joshua Mack, he can pull it off all right, and he's still no got question. respect, even though he's got the rec specs on, for sure. Good look. Good look by our camera crew. Second down and eight. Now Willis just overshoots his man trying to get it to Noah Frith. That's a second target to Noah Frith who missed last week, missed a lot of the season and two drops from Noah Frith. Third and eight for Willis and you know, you, this is not four down territory because you, you got to make sure you if you do give it back to Virginia Tech you got to give them a long field to go so eight yards is what you need to continue this drive. A lot of cushion at the top of your screen. That's C.J. Yarbrough out there, number 13. He's got Jermaine Waller, Virginia Tech's best cover corner on him. Now they're making it man-to-man -man towards the top of the screen with that three-by-one formation. Willis will look his way. Flutters it out there, and Yarbrough goes up and makes the catch. Willis's arm was hit when he threw it, and it was just straight up in the air like a wounded duck, and Yarbrough shot it down. He just pointed to the sky and thanked the big man upstairs for that one because <laughs> that wasn't on him. But just you can watch, just a split second too long in the pocket. Your wide receiver's open right now. That double clutch, the ball just floated out there. But watch that big 6 3 frame go up and get it. Very fortunate to come down with that one. And a fresh set of downs in Hokie territory. Flames continue to be very deliberate on offense. Mack, nowhere to go. Alan Tisdale led the charge for the Hokies. Flames have an accurate kicker in Alex Barbier, the young man out of Alpharetta, Georgia, but he hasn't kicked very many long ones. His long on the year is just 42 yards. We talked with Hugh Freeze earlier in the week about his confidence. He said he'll throw him out there for 50, and there's no wind, hardly any wind at all, today in Blacksburg, so that won't have an impact. Willis sprinting to his right, now back to his left. Has a receiver and a whole host of blockers in front of him. Huntley inside the 20, third down to the 24. Goes the tight end, Johnny Huntley, and that's a big play. And we haven't seen many misdirection or, you know, special trick plays, but watch this. Look at Huntley on the backside. Get a chip on the defender and just leak out. He has a whole host of blockers out in front of him. Really Maybe good job. Maybe should have waited on him. Right, no, really good Go job. Out, out Tech just stop him. That was, I mean, that was fantastic. I mean, it was... That is a great play call in that situation as Virginia Tech was fast flowing on the run and the sprint outs. Good change up by Kent Austin in this offense. So about a 41 yard field goal from this spot right now for the Flames. If it came down to it, Mac gets a couple more here. Now if you're Virginia Tech, you start thinking about using those timeouts. Yes. You need to start taking timeouts. You need to start stopping the clock because. Timeout, Virginia Tech. Oh, Their in, first of a half. Injured player on the field. But one. Yeah, they got an injured player. Yeah. So they did call one anyways, but. It's like they yeah, shot Crawford. Yeah. And you have to, you, I mean, you have to assume right now that Liberty is going to kick a field goal and make the field goal at least. And so if you're Virginia Tech right now, you say, look, okay, let's keep as much time on the clock as we can and I mean when you look at that kicker quite honestly Chris I mean what's that dude been, does that dude been doing some curls look at that I, that's Alex that, Barbier the kicker that guy's got, got the biggest of guns of any kicker I think I've ever seen so without even seeing him kick a field goal I got a lot of confidence in him just because of how 
skinny those wristbands are around his biceps. He can do some curls. Um, but yeah, so you got to try to get as much time on the clock when you get the ball back, assuming that you can get the ball back. And right now, I mean, the, what has plagued this Liberty offense has been fumbles. And you got to make sure you just hold on to the football. Do not try anything crazy. And uh, Cam Newton has come up many times in our broadcast so far. And anyone who watched the Patriots game a couple weeks ago saw Cam Newton try to do a little bit too much, fumble the ball, and lose the game. Yeah. That's what we saw from Willis when they were in the red zone. When he fumbled that You're football, right. he was going down. Rather than taking the sack and living to play another down, he tried to make something special happen and it ended up being a turnover. Second and eight from the 22. Pick it in motion out of the backfield. Willis. Inside the 10. And it looks like he wanted to go down. Lost his footing a little bit, but... Yeah, right here, I mean, really good job. I mean, it, it was incredible timing to pull the trigger and run the ball right at that point. You had two defenders bearing in at you that ended up running into each other. But, I mean, you have set yourself up in a position that, I mean, you are you are right there, ready to win this game. You want to run the clock out a little bit more, pick up another first down, and obviously a touchdown would be fantastic. But it, you know, really interesting of whether... Yeah, Willis was coached on that last play to look go down rather than try to make a tackle because break a tackle You don't want to fumble the ball and if you yeah. score a touchdown then we give Virginia Tech the ball back It looked like he was frustrated. He pounded the turf when he went down, but I'm not sure he should have been frustrated I'm not sure that that wasn't the wise thing to do rather than to your point mark face a, a blindside tackle Maybe put the ball on the carpet Maybe score too soon Virginia Tech two. using their second timeout. Yeah. Scoring two soon left. is a real thing for us. You, know, you get right now, it doesn't seem like Virginia Tech has much of a chance to get the ball back. If you can run the ball out and kick a field goal, and so a, a, a quick touchdown would actually be detrimental towards Liberty. And they're gonna get one here. Pickett can pretty much waltz in. Yeah, good job by Justin Hamilton. Basically said, look, let him score. I mean, it, it, that that from that defensive alignment and just the struggle and strain by these defenders to get off blocks, that to me, if I'm looking at number 24, Devin Taylor, he did not try to make that play. They let him score. And let's see how that goes because now Virginia Tech is going to get the ball back. Down six right now and seven if they can punch this one through. And Barbier, the Arnold Schwarzenegger of kickers, splits the uprights. The lead is seven. And if you're if you're the Liberty Flames in that case, Mark, I mean, my mother always said, never look a gift horse in the mouth. They're going to give you a score. You go ahead and score and just put it on your defense here for the last minute 41. Yes, unless you, you got take a, guy a knee at the one yard hot. line if you're. <laughs> I mean, if you're right. the Flames there, do you, you're you not going to tackle me? Fine, I'm going to take a knee at the one. Well, it, so that that's what you would want to coach your player to do, just in terms of, you know, possession, football, in terms of clock management. Watch 24. I mean, Devin Taylor was not trying to make that tackle. He could have made the tackle, but right there, I tell my running back, look, just stop. Take a knee at the one-yard line. I, I played in Super but Bowl so 46. Can, I get it, but so much can happen. A fumble. A botch right. snap on a field goal. You're right. <laughs> I just remember, you know, in Super Bowl 46, Ahmad Bradshaw played for the Giants. Ahmad Bradshaw was told, look, if they try to let you score, take a knee on the one-yard line. And he got there, and he just he couldn't stop his momentum. He rolled forward into the end zone and gave Tom Brady a chance to throw a Hail Mary and come back. And it's such an unnatural thing for a runner to do is to stop with no one in front of him. But... That would have been the smart play. I remember growing up an Eagles fan watching Brian Dawkins do that a bunch and, you know, always was complimented on, on his time management and the presence. So Virginia Tech gets the ball back with an opportunity to tie this one up or take the lead. Touchback on this bouncing kick. Hokies do have three scoring drives this year of 70 or more yards in less than two minutes. It has been done. And when you've got a guy like Hendon Hooker, at quarterback, it can be done again. 
Yeah, and Hendon Hooker does not throw interceptions. You just look at his career and the interceptions he's thrown. He's, he's thrown five interceptions his entire career. And they all came in just two games. So if he hasn't thrown an interception yet, he's probably not going to throw an interception uh, in this one. Flames come with just five. Dropped. Trey Turner couldn't squeeze it. A reminder, West Durham, Roddy Jones standing by. Got Pitt and Florida State coming your way at 4 o'clock. We'll probably, I shouldn't say probably, we might send it to the studio and JC and the folks for a little bit of time, but if Virginia Tech can get a scoring drive here, Mark, we may be here a while. Mm -hmm. Still one time out on the board for the Hokies. The Flames again bring four. Tries the back shoulder, this time connects. Again, it's Caleb Smith. Another great play by Caleb Smith in the clutch. And both of these teams on their last two drives have gone three by one formations and trying to isolate the single receiver backside. Good job by Virginia Tech exploiting the man to man coverage. This time Turner goes up and makes the grab. What do you think about no pressure from the Liberty Flames here, Mark? Yeah, I mean, if you're going to rush four, you might as well just rush three and drop a guy back because they are getting nothing in terms of pressure up front. And I think that's probably the better move than to blitz because when you blitz a mobile quarterback, it's tough. Hearns, and that's a nice pass to Turner. Hokies are on the move as the clock gets ticking toward one minute. Well, that time they did rush three and, and drop the guy back, so they, they listened to me, but, you know, Hendon Hooker still found the, the hole in the zone coverage, and right now, you know, there's look at three big linemen having trouble getting down. Blackshear tries a stiff arm, stays in bounds. Now we have a flag. And it could be a face mask on Blackshear. That was Anthony Butler who made the stop, and it was right where Butler made the tackle where the flag came down. Oh, it was a little slow to get up, holding his shoulder. Let's check out Blackshear's stiff arm here. Yeah, he gets that face mask. Personal foul. Face mask. Number six. Defense. Ooh. Wow. Ooh, the they call was it on against the wrong Butler. number six. Did it? You don't think that could be a mistake, do you? Just uh -huh. went the wrong way? I didn't see Butler grab the face mask at all. Yeah, I mean, both number six. They said number six on the defense. I mean, it was definitely a mistake because that face mask was clearly Raheem Blackshear grabbing Anthony Butler's face mask. To relevant now. Hooker up top to the end zone. Scores! Trey Turner has been huge on this drive, and he comes up with the score. Um, Trey Turner, big play Trey, comes down with this one. Two big receptions on this drive. Aided by a phantom face mask call, but when you watch just you know, Trey Turner's one-on-one -on -one with the cornerback, relatively good position, but the ball was thrown behind the receiver on purpose. Turner does a good job of getting his body in the way and just basketball boxing out the defender. And just like that, Chris, that's why you take a knee on the one-yard line, because all of a sudden you got to do it all over again with 52 seconds left. You are proven right, my friend. Big thanks to that guy. He made a, had one drop early on in that drive, but then came back with three big catches, including the final one, the score, to knock this game at 35 apiece. Well, let's take a look at maybe the biggest play on that drive. The, the face mask penalty was called... Let's look to see Blackshear's face mask, whether that was grabbed as well. It might see, have been. We can't see it from that angle, yeah. Yeah, we cannot. It, it was pretty obvious that it did go the other way. But let's see from this angle whether Butler gets his hand up in the face mask. And so there's a there's a glance off the face mask, but that to me, that is not a face mask. It, the head wasn't even moved or restricted, but on the other side, Blackshear really did... Grab the face mask and pull down. It looked like the, the flag came in from the back, which, I mean, it is, that is a call that's going to be looked at and reviewed. And 
in a very, very timely moment. Two calls in this game, whether it was that fumble that was blown dead that eventually recovered in the first half by Virginia Tech or that face mask call have led to this 35-35 ball game. Forty-nine seconds. Hugh Freeze with a shake of the head. That's all it took for Virginia Tech to march 75 yards for the score. Well, it only took Virginia Tech 49 seconds. Liberty's got 49 seconds with three to spare. If Malik Willis, as we just said moments ago, can answer. It has been blow by blow for these two heavyweight quarterbacks. And Malik Willis, every time Hooker scores, Willis scores, and vice versa. Now it's Willis's turn. Yeah, and it'll be interesting to see, too, if Kent Austin brings out any other kind of eclectic, creative plays. And we saw the throwback to the tight end on the last drive. And right now they got the, the wide bunch set. They're going to count the box, see if they have enough receivers. If not, they'll throw it out to the bunch. Back in motion now. He's split to the bottom of your screen. Willis has a receiver and gets out of bounds. That's Yarborough. Saving those two timeouts on the board for Liberty. And Liberty right now is manipulating the Virginia Tech defense. They understand that just with the personnel situation that they have, they're going to go zone and they're going to bump linebackers and safeties over to the overloaded side, leaving one on one at the top of the screen with Yarborough and Jermaine Waller. Virginia Tech brings just three and they spy Willis. Receiver gets a foot in bounds. That's Frith. Now close to midfield with a second down and that's first down on that play. So close to midfield here, Mark, with 39 seconds to go. Yeah, and two timeouts left. Don't be surprised to see a shot towards the middle of the field if it's a cover two situation. But it looks like Virginia Tech's bringing pressure, or at least showing pressure, early in this down. Hollyfield showed it. Will he back out? He does. Mack. Brought down by Barno. Good gain on first down. And now you're right. They're going to have to use one of those timeouts with the ball near midfield. And what a play by Amari Barno. He's lined up at the defensive end towards the top of the screen, the formation. Time sees the run and folds over top. I mean, just like a really good job. Out. Lost 38, top of your screen. He understands it's run. They call Please it the roll the post, where if you're away from the play, you kind of back up and go towards the post and Thank then you. pursue from inside out. Just a really, really good job by Amari Barno. He's had a fantastic game. This is getting excited, Chris. <laughs> It's getting interesting, and it's, it's a it's chess it. match between these two coaches. It's, it's 30 really seconds, fun to watch. yeah. Let's see, they probably have to get to 25 yard line if you're going to look at Barbier's career long as a measuring stick. There he is. Which is 42 Franco Colombo yards. Of yep. kickers. 42 is a career long for Barbier, so if they get to the 25, that's a 42 yard kick. And other than that 42 yarder, he's one for three on 40 plus yard field goals. Shedro Lewis in motion. Screen. The top of the screen. Empty backfield for Willis. Now Willis is going to run it. Down at the 45. Hurry up, get back on the ball quickly. Hollyfield doing a nice job of bringing him down. It is a first down, so the clock will stop temporarily. It's not stopping, though, because they placed the ball down quick. Ooh, Willis <laughs> over the outside, and Waller had a notion. That was dangerous in two different ways, Mark, because Waller, if he picks it, he's gone. But if the ball somehow gets through him and Yarbrough was able to make the catch, he might be gone. Yeah, wow. And you know, Waller understands the situation. He understands that he's the one man-to-man -man coverage and all the pressure's on him. So you know, he's seen a lot of passes. He's, he's gotten beat on a couple. He said, look, I'm breaking on this one. I know what's coming. Good job by Waller in that last play. Still one time out on the board for the Flames. Now they're doubling over top of the receiver at the bottom, bringing pressure. Can Willis escape it? He does initially down to the 41. Now they're going to have to call timeout. a timeout. Yep. 
Tisdale was there to make the stop, and that might have been a game-saving stop by Tisdale. Oh, my gosh. Their third and final of the half. 40-second timeout. And what a call by Justin Hamilton. Brings pressure from Jermaine Waller's side. You see that cornerback blitz. I do not know how Malik Willis gets out of that tackle and just picks up a few yards, but... You know, Justin Hamilton said, look, if you're if you're trying to isolate this receiver on the short side of the field, I'm going to bring that cornerback roll of safety over top and force the situation. Good job by that guy making that play call and good execution for the most part by Virginia Tech. But you know, we currently have a situation where there are basically you can either take two shots towards the end zone if you're Liberty or you got to get out of bounds. Because Let me there's ask you not this. enough time. Yep. Is there enough time for a play over the middle and then a spike? That, that is 10 seconds enough. You think now they put an extra second on the clock. 11 seconds yep. is enough to complete a 15-yard play over the middle, then run up and spike it with two seconds left to kick a field goal. You can, but you can't double clutch. Like if, if there's a situation where you're back in the pocket, you hit the top of your drop, and you, you're getting ready to throw, and you have to double clutch it, the extra couple seconds are going to be too much. So. We'll see kind of where this ball gets directed. Ball tipped. <sighs> and Barno, Barno another tip pass. He's had at least two or three of those on this game. He has had a huge game. 6-6 defensive end. Transition from that linebacker spot. He just has a feel, a knack for when the Quarterback is going to release the football. Gets tall and I mean, just a really fantastic. This is going to be a very long field goal try. 59, 59 yard yards. No wind again to speak of. Alex Barbier is going to give it everything he's got for the win. And it's blocked. Oh. It's blocked and picked up. It's picked oh up by goodness. Jermaine Waller. He'll score for the Hokies. That is Beaver Ball. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Well, this is the exact situation that Clemson had of Davo Sweeney said, look, if I had the situation to kick this long field goal again, I would not do it. But could there have been a timeout call before the kick? The third and final of the half. Oh, second timeout. <laughs> they did Virginia call a timeout. Tech. Virginia oh, Tech called the timeout before the kick. And I guess we couldn't hear the whistle amongst all the cardboard cutouts cheering in Lane <laughs> Stadium. <laughs> wow. Now, now what do you do? Here's the question. What do you do if you're Hugh Freeze? Well, watch this block. It's right up the middle. See, this is a low kick. It's a low kick, and that's the, that, the, the trajectory of the kick becomes the problem when you get it to be that long because you, you have to push it out in front in order to just have the length on it. And I think, you know, Coach right now is saying, look, yo, let's not do that again. Let's just throw the ball in the end zone and hope we can get a touchdown because that did not look very good. And, man, what a turn of events. That timeout call that we can so often freeze a kicker and... But man, that took back a huge play off the board. So Virginia you Tech's are having trouble getting guys on the field. Malik Willis is now back. Both teams are having a hard time getting the proper personnel on the field. And no one's covering CJ Yarbrough at the top of the screen. And there's no timeouts back. left. Uh, Everybody's back. You can't even see five players in maroon jerseys. They're so far up back. Quickly to the outside. There's oh plenty of time on the wow. clock, Mark. See, that's why it's it's fourth and six. You can pick up a first down. I mean, that is a bad call by Justin Hamilton. You just you gave can this. Wow. This is 50 yards out, so this is a little bit more manageable than the last kick. Again, his career long is 42. 51 officially for the win for Alex Barbier. This one is up. Does it have the distance? It does! With one second remaining on the clock, Barbier puts the flames up in Blacksburg. <laughs> You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> 
You freeze to get off the field. There's one second left. And this is a big one second left, but what just happened? And you look at the situation. There is the Liberty coaches out coach the Virginia Tech coaches. This situation on the field, you can pick up a first down with eight seconds left. You pick up the first down, make a shorter field goal try, and allow your kicker to take another shot at a shorter field goal, banged it through. Justin Hamilton is gonna be kicking himself. He did not understand the situation on the field. Had all his guys back by the goal line, Chris, as you said. It was an easy pass and catch situation, and what a turn of events in this game. Defense. The original try, the original field goal attempt was blocked, but a timeout had been called just prior to the snap by Virginia Tech. That block was taken to the house by Jermaine Waller. The Hokies began to celebrate, thinking the game had been won. Then they noticed the timeout. They came back. A short pitching catch from Willis to Yarbrough set up Barbier, the senior kicker from Alpharetta, Georgia whose career long was 42 yards coming into this. And he goes 51 yards and splits the uprights to give Liberty the lead with one second remaining. Hey, Chris, if you remember, okay, they, the timeout is called, but they block the field goal, run it back for a touchdown. They're celebrating. They're off the field. Justin Hamilton has a hard time just getting his defensive players back out on the field. And in that time where he's trying to get his players on the field just not a lot of time to understand the situation in the football game just oh and no man, that was out of control no timeouts because they used their last timeout to ice the kicker exactly oh my goodness oh we saw and no khalil herbert to return this kick either although i have a feeling that alex barbier is just gonna squib this thing somewhere around the 30 yard line yeah you just you want to punch this down the field, be prepared for any laterals or throws across the field. It's very important for the widest players on this kickoff coverage team to stay at home and not over pursue. Now we'll get the pitches. We've seen it happen before. Spurmeister back at Robinson going backwards, though. They need to go forward. Lewis. Ball still free. And now it's over. The Liberty Flames, in just their second full season at the FBS level, first ranking at number 25 coming into the game, go to Blacksburg and shock the Virginia Tech Hokies. The Flames are unbeaten. The schedule gets much tougher from here on out, but their first real test on the road at Virginia Tech, Mark, was their second win against an ACC foe this year. They're for real. They are for real. Malik Willis is for real. Joshua Mack is for real. I mean, this entire team in the defense and the coaching, everything came together when it counted the most. Out coached a very well coached Virginia Tech team. And what a fun, fun ball game to witness amongst two in state rivals. Two hours apart. And the Commonwealth is all about the Liberty Flames tonight. 38-35 winners at Virginia Tech. For Mark Hertzlick, Katie George, and our entire crew, I'm Chris Cotter. Now let's send it to the studio. Jordan, man, we had a great one here today. Great day of football still to come. Welcome into the huddle. What a finish there and a surprise for the